This podcast features adults using adult language. You have been warned. Previously on Acquisitions Incorporated. After being nuked from orbit by a foiled clone missile, the home office in Waterdeep lies in ruins, leading Omen down a dangerous path of Asmodean conservatorship. Using her wish from the Feywild, Certainty rewinds the clock to 14 years ago. But when they arrive, something has changed. Everything. And there is a wide open plain in front of you with rolling hills, a great glittering sea, and a city with towering walls. It is not water deep. I pull out the sending stone I used to text my dad. Does it work? It doesn't work. <gasps> Evelyn grabs her battle axe. The blade chips ever so slightly. I, I try to jump with my boots. You are just jumping with your own strength. <laughs> Here, but hold on, hold on. I'm still rich, right? Yeah, what about our stock? I reach down into that coin purse. It seems like there are a few coins missing. <laughs> it's gonna be okay, we're gonna figure this out, right? I'm a Nepo baby, I've never been poor! <laughs> I have offices all over the multiverse. Let me see if I can figure out where in the hell we are. Where the hell they are is Greyhawk, and DM Jeremy Crawford takes a seat as OG DM Daddy, Chris Perkins, takes over. Did you bring the milk this time? <laughs> no, I brought the pain. <laughs> Not only has the party reverted to third level, but aspects of their lives have reverted as well. Sir, have we met before? I <gasps> don't <gasps> think so. <laughs> I mean, it is, it is my pleasure yeah. to meet your acquaintance. Very, very nice to meet you. Is there something that I missed? As a Vibo shipper, I am devastated. How come you don't remember? Did I just read that totally wrong? Sometimes I read things totally wrong. Oh, no, no, it was a fuck fest. <laughs> Good, that's what I thought I saw. It was an erotic buffet. Unfamiliar with the changes to this Greyhawk, the party must follow clues left in Vi's satellite office from an interdimensional side piece. Dearest Vi, you have been transported to an alternate reality in which things you knew to be true may no longer be so. Omen and his crew may be the key to setting things right. Good luck, my love. Yours forever, Morty. <laughs> P.S. Suddenly, a device phasing through planes of reality explodes. Didn't you say there was something special down in the basement? Yeah, stuff is cutting us in the butt. We need to figure out what's going on. Yes. Down in this cellar, this is where I created the first prototype of the Cosmo Hopper, which can phase into other worlds. But if something just exploded, well, <laughs> that doesn't say well for our chances of getting out of here. A strong box containing a powerful mechanical rod. You believe that this rod has the ability to detect temporal disturbances. Downstairs in a series of laboratories, the party discovers a temporal rift, a purple mist, and twisted employees who seem to be pissed. Amid the battle, Omen takes charge. I'm going to cast the second level spell, Magic Weapon, on my maw. I'm gonna kiss with reverence the red jewel on top of the mace, and then I'm gonna heft it up from the ground and try to put it directly through the lizard. Saying. But Jerry, that's a one. But I do have plus four. Pity a natural one always misses. <laughs> you are pinned. I'm learning a lot. Underneath the device. <laughs> After an intense battle, one of Vi's security constructs nearly bakes Bobby at 450 degrees. There is a chunk of smoldering black rock in here with you. Odd cut, kind of sharp cornered chunk of black stone. Peace returns to the laboratory and the real work can begin. There are two glowing orbs at the end of... Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> At the end of... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Christopher, what have you done? <laughs> the vault gushes its luminous treasures forth, including a journal kept by an apprentice regarding the black rock. Clearly the rock is a piece of something bigger. A tall black obelisk. I sense we're on the brink of a momentous discovery.
What's that? Thank you for coming. To kick things off, let me just say that many years ago in university, I took a Shakespearean lit course, and one of the plays we studied was Romeo and Juliet. You've heard of it. And one of my classmates uh, delivered a scathing critique of the play, saying, and I quote, oh, it's such a cliché. The whole star-crossed lovers thing's been done to death. <laughs> to which my professor said, gently, all those star-crossed lovers stories you've seen and heard, those came after <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet was the original star-crossed lovers story. It is the stuff that cliches are made of. Tonight's adventure is set in the world of Greyhawk. And for those who don't know, it's been around a while. Um, Tasha, Morden Kanan, Big B, and many more trace their origins to this fantastic world. If I were to summarize it very quickly, I would say that Greyhawk is where heroes of all stripes, including those of morally gray fiber, can make their mark and even gain a measure of infamy by plundering dungeons and slaying monsters. To which you might say, but Chris, Albert Chris. <laughs> That's a cliche. That sounds like every D&D campaign setting. To which I would retort, ah, but all those campaign settings you know and played and read, they came after Greyhawk. Greyhawk was the original campaign setting. It is the stuff cliches are made of. <laughs> Welcome to Acquisitions Incorporated Series 2. I'd like to bring out my players, starting with the ladies. The Bard Certainty, played by Jasmine Bullar. Do I look bardish enough for you? What's that? Do I look bardish enough for you? I cannot hear a word you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting so much echo in my ears right now. I cast dissonant whispers. Dissonant whispers. <laughs> that I got. <laughs> I'd like to bring out Evelyn the Paladin, played by Anna Prosser. Vi the Artificer, played by Jeremy Crawford. <laughs> ow, ow! <laughs> Omen the War Priest, play, played by my good friend Jerry Holkins. <laughs> Sans mace on this particular occasion. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, the great, the immortal, Jim Dark Magic, <laughs> played by Mike Krahulik. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for coming back for some more mayhem. Thank you. <laughs> you cannot seat me between my two dads and expect me to behave. <laughs> you can't. 
I'm going to enter my password. <laughs> <laughs> Owlbear123. <laughs> hoot hoot. <laughs> but it's like, the, but the O's in yeah, hoot are yeah, zero. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's alpha level of security. <laughs> it is really hard to type with pause. <laughs> This is why there are no sophisticated owlbear societies. <laughs> the typing. That you know of. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. It's true. Yes. I mean, what do you mean by sophisticated? I mean, like, having kids. I feel like we should return to monkey and <laughs> embrace the sophistication of nature. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, okay, whatever. Now Vi is pondering creating a keyboard that will work <laughs> for Owlbear. It'd be so big. <laughs> yes. I just punch you to key. I think I've got a feather up my butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope, we're good. <laughs> no, did he just not say that the feather is gone? <laughs> good. <laughs> you know what? Things are great, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's now in the right spot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, everybody. <laughs> Act one, city events. Here we go. You ready? I am ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. Bring All it. Right. Vi, you are in the dungeon basement of your workshop, and after scouring the notes left behind by Oglethorpe and Felicia, the two apprentices who are stationed here, and scanning the obelisk fragment that you recovered, uh, with your little chrono rod device, nice. which looks suspiciously like a different kind of device, <laughs> uh, you surmise that the obelisk fragment has temporal anomalies, and that you, given time, might be able to do something with that to help your party in its current predicament. Because as you know, you are not of this world, they are not of this world, you are all brought here by a mishap. Um, and you're pretty deep into that research. Is there anything else that you feel like you're going to need or want to do? Well, honeys, <laughs> the last time my employees, rest their souls, attempted to do any work with these obelisk pieces, they clearly as evidenced by all this slime and appendages on the floor. I suppose we should clean that up. This is very dangerous. However, I think if we can get more of these stones and assemble them, I might be able to hook them up to the Cosmo Hopper prototype mm -hmm. that I have here in this lab mm -hmm. and use them to jumpstart us back to where we came from. Right, now, Vi, I, obviously I love what I'm hearing, and we'd love to see that hustle. This is the Sigma grind set. But <laughs> you gotta rise for it. Now, but I have a question. So give me some basic ideas, just some run-of-the-mill concepts about the obelisk fragments. Break them down for me in like three words. Temporal magic? Mm -hmm. My lovely chrono detector device. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, this comes up a lot. Yes. Oh, yes, it does. And it, 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 it detects that there is this strange temporal distortion around it. We can harness that. Because I, I, I'm glad that you brought up the temporal distortion. Because what you're saying is we should get more of these. And there is a loud sound behind <laughs> I'm glad you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> my soul left my body. <laughs> and when you all turn, you see that Bobby is encased in a magical sphere. It looks like he may have fiddled with one of the devices in the workshop and somehow accidentally trapped himself. <laughs> he's just inside it right now? Yes, it's like he's inside this prismatic bubble. And you can see he's surprised. It is surprising. Um, a little contrite. <laughs> and he's pressing at the inside and beating us, but you can't even hear him. And then he starts talking to you, and you have no idea what he's saying, because none of the sound is escaping. Uh, cool, Vi, what's that? Well, I have not been back to Greyhawk in a long, long time. 
And I do not think this is even the Greyhawk that I visited. I, again, think we're in an alternate timeline. Mm -hmm. So I do not know what in the hell <laughs> my employees were doing in this lab while the other Vi was away. Mm -hmm. The, so, the sphere just sort of rolls behind Vi while she's talking, <laughs> and Bobby's just running around like a hamster. I try to stop him, and I breathe on the bubble and right in the fog of my breath, look with your eyes, not with your hands, frowny face. <laughs> just gonna, just now, touch random shit. I, I walk over to the orb, and I, I tap on it gently, and then... I say, lovely fellow whom I just met. This is the, I hate that. Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> you, you, you keep acting. Uh, did, did we used to know each other? We kind of mentioned this before. I mean, we don't want to delve into your personal life or anything. Well, I think the temporal distortion has clearly done something to my memory, but I can tell you for sure that if what you say is true, mm mm, -mm. I believe it. <laughs> I open my spell book, go back several pages, tear some out carefully. It's just some fanfic, catching up for you later. From the last time I saw you two together. I look at the first page and I immediately blush. <laughs> <laughs> Vi blushing? That must have been some good fanfic. Yeah. 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 It's going like to sell was, a lot of copies. It sounds like it starts, it starts with a bang. <laughs> so... I blush again. <laughs> can you hear me? Bobby, can, he, he can see you. He cannot hear you. He makes gestures to make it clear he cannot hear you. Ear-related gestures. Did anyone try hitting it? Maybe could you try to shatter it? I mean, this is a great idea. But would you like to do the honors, or, or shall I? I'm not here, right? I mean, I know I'm here. That is correct, Jim. Okay. You are not here. I, mean, I don't always know if I'm here. <laughs> I'm here, right? Are you? <clears throat> yeah, I say, listen, this is, this is five minutes. This is five minutes work tops. Um, I, just, I just get my two-handed maul out, okay. and I go fucking nuts on it. <laughs> All right. Uh, you, you just sort of bang him around like a croquet ball. Yeah, I mean, I, and I do it for a while. I do it longer than I should. I do it even after I think it has not worked. But, right. but I make sure everybody knows it's like one or two more tops. You find the sphere impenetrable, easy to hit, <laughs> <laughs> and has a certain amount of elasticity so that when you do whap it, it actually goes even farther than you would have hoped. This is incredible. That's fun. And it starts knocking things over, like Vi's coffee maker falls over and a bunch of other Oh, you have gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> and it is around the time when Omen is having maximum fun this at Bobby's 20 expense. 20 hits in. <laughs> <laughs> I have invented a new sport. <laughs> that you hear a new sound, and it's not coming from inside, it's coming from outside. Through the vents and things, you can hear somebody outside of Vi's workshop, in the street perhaps, is playing a hurdy-gurdy. <gasps> That's my favorite gurdy. Mine too. Is it good? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's, trade your, wait, let's okay. listen. There's yeah. somebody who's good at yes, it. Yes, they're doing, they're doing well. All right. Damn. Can okay. we go listen? I okay. They're, they're kind of going crazy okay. out there. I'm going to try to communicate via sign language that there is... And I know that this is going to be difficult, but I want to try to communicate to Bobby via sign language that there is an amazing hurdy-gurdy outside. How do you do that? <clears throat> but he won't be able to get there. <laughs> so, 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 hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that that's probably going to get through. All right. That's going to penetrate the bubble. And so you all hop in the elevator and go upstairs and stumble out into the street. And you can see that Vi's workshop is a little off the beaten path, but it's in the heart of Greyhawk City. And there are people moving around. But on a corner, uh, right near the workshop, there is a young girl playing the hurdy-gurdy on a corner. And there are all these flyers stuck to it. Really? And you're shocked. 
shocked, I tell you, when you see startled a familiar face staring back at you from one of the flyers. It is Jim with a dove. Sort of. Uncle and Jim! You see on the flyer it says Jim Dark Magic's Phantasmagoric Prestidigitarium. <gasps> it, would, it would say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Jim was here. This is great news. I, I didn't know that I didn't know that Jim was here. You did? Are you crying? And as the young girls playing the hurdy gurdy, tiny little illusory butterflies are sort of coming off the top of it and dancing around to the music. And you can also see that she's handing out tickets. Uh, but uh, pretty steep there, Om, and it's five silver a head. And actually, one old lady walks by and says, Five silver for, for that? Get off. Just and she just walks broke. away. Yeah, just say you're broke then. Yeah, exactly. Clearly yeah. you don't yeah. have tape. Shut your fucking yeah. mouth. Who do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you are? Yeah, this walk your broke ass in the other direction. Yep. Cowers. Yeah, keep going. Doesn't have five silver ass. Don't come back here. I <laughs> <laughs> got intense. God. This old woman wets herself as she... <laughs> Scampers down the street to get away from Jesus. you as quickly as possible. So I'm gonna go over. I can't abide these butterflies though. That has to stop. I'm trying to get them out of here. But I am definitely gonna get my mitts on one of these flyers for sure. Yeah, so when you look at the flyer, you can see that uh, this Jim, who spells his name a little oddly. Is that so? Yeah, he seems to have changed the spelling of his name if this is indeed the same Jim Dark Magic that you see before you. I see that dove. And I'm, the energy's right, but you're saying it's spelled like how? It's got a Q in it. What? <laughs> where? Yeah, you all get to decide. <laughs> Did you say where? <laughs> you all get to decide where the Fair Q <laughs> is in Jim Dark Magic's name. I hope it starts um, with Q. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jim, Jim Quark Magic. Quark <laughs> Magic. Um, but it is distinctly odd, and you can see there's information on the playbill. That tells you where it is. It's at the Playhouse Theater in the high quarter of the city of Greyhawk. It's a nightly performance, which means you could go as soon as this evening. If Are you going to buy us all tickets, Omen? Well, There's also on the back a list of sponsors who have very important names. What? Oh. Like, I, mean, I, I flip it over to look at it. It's like, you know, who's he, you know, who does he, who's he working with now? Like, who is, who is in control of this brand? You don't recognize any of the names, which is not surprising to you since you're not terribly familiar with the Greyhawk. They, they, they probably suck shit, right? I mean, I can tell, <laughs> like, when I look at the names, I'm sort of like, no, rent. absolutely not, gross. This one just sounds like an asshole. Yeah, there's yeah. no question. There's I, no question. Those are D-bags. Uh, oh, man, may I take a look, honey? I don't think so. Uh, I think there's another one that you can have. <laughs> I'm looking at this one. There's more that you can have if you want. He's going to save that for his album. Yeah, oh. this is mine. It's going in the shrine. Yeah. I, I go... I go grab one to see, do I recognize any of the sponsors? Oh, um, yes. You can see that among the luminaries here are Otto and Tensor. Whoa, shit. Sorry. The floating disc guy? No. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Disc himself? Are you serious? <laughs> Johnny Disc. My, my, my friends, surely none of these sponsors would be as fine as yourselves and Acquisitions Incorporated. That's, this is what I've been <gasps> You want to yeah. sponsor Jim? That's so sweet. Yeah. However, oh. I would like to point out that two of these sponsors are two of the best known spellcasters in the multiverse. Okay, but so is Jim. So, yeah. like, what's your point? Yeah, exactly. And, and, and again. You saw what we saw to that, you saw what we said to that other old lady, right? <laughs> <laughs> other old lady? <laughs> I'm... <laughs> just, you see me at first, I'm like back to back with him, and as he says other old lady, I start to like shuffle away. <laughs> Take your next step very carefully. Vi, um, I've, I've enjoyed working together, and it's something that I would like to continue to do. Um, you are, you are, you look younger then certainly can you help me with this yeah i was going to um, advise you to stop i feel like um, i'm in real danger you are. I, I feel like steel i'm looking steel traps for sale <coughs> steel traps i feel like i'm looking at a cougar but not that type of cougar dad <laughs> dad okay dad yes i'll i'll look at my sheet i'll just look at my mm. sheet very quietly mm. 
All right, here, I'm gonna turn around and say, I saw something new on the sheet. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Time is immaterial. Uh, What my dad was trying to say is that he measures beauty in that giant, wrinkly brain of yours in the poise with which you carry yourself and in your ability to kill us. (laughs) And he is a fool at expressing emotions. Yeah, I'm bad and dumb. So he does the whole negging thing, and he doesn't get that it doesn't work. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm sorry for that. Yeah. And I love you, and you look really pretty today. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) So good today. Thank you for that, honey. Yeah. Is it is it over? Did I? Or can I live? You just need to not say stuff like that. Okay. Please. All right. Just, like, not, just say maybe words just, better. Maybe just not say stuff. <laughs> not that maybe, stuff. Maybe that's where the issue came from. Just pre- like as a general <clears throat> rule, like if you want to write this down, yeah. Just don't say cougar like ever again. Really? Okay. Yeah. Just take that one out. Well, what if he see, what if he sees a cougar? Just call it another big cat, <laughs> a puma. Like nobody cares, right? We're gonna get the message. Yeah. It's a panther. Yeah. You know what I mean, just uh, don't say. Cougar. I think. I think you can say mountain lion. I think they're interchangeable. I mean, yeah. I, Did you hear something? I'm I didn't. Pretty sure. Oh yeah, I'm not even here. Sorry. I just I know a lot about big cats. So <laughs> I love I love all the great cats. No. So but what I'm wondering is I mean it's gonna I'm gonna do like the D and D version of like when you forget your wallet. I'm just gonna do I'm just gonna pat, pat and paw around like in the front of my pants. Oh no! Like, can you not afford to buy us tickets? Well, I'm. Uh, Probably I can. There's obviously we can trade skills in kind. I have certain saleable capacities. It's okay if you don't have any money. I, th- I have a lot of money. I think that. <laughs> well, I mean. I think I, I lost it, but I but I oh I found it. Oh, it's gone again. I, I think this is magic money. Is oh. It magic? Yeah. What if we like? Uh, I asked the hurdy gurdy girl. Do you get free tickets to the show because you're doing the promo? Maybe. So well, I we, thought maybe if we. Mm. Hey, but we know Jim. Maybe there's like a VIP list or something. Oh. You think we're gonna be on the list? May- I mean, I mean you're you- definitely on. The He's list. your no. uncle, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, maybe, well, we maybe. have to. Like, if there is a list, we are on it. Yeah. We should just go. Maybe they'll yeah. just let us in. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I mean, you I- should do that thing where you know how, like, if you act like you belong. Yeah. And you're like in your shiny armor. If you're just like, I'm supposed to be her, and you just. Or I could and- just ask him real nice. That, that could. Uh, that's a. That is an approach. <laughs> It's, it's one way to do it's things. one way. Yeah. What's your name? Girl who's playing a hurdy-gurdy? Oh, Karina. Oh, she's close. Karina? Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> you play very well. Do you know Jim? Dark Magic? Dark Magic? Everybody Dark, Quark Jim Magic? Dark Magic. Everyone? Has Jim been here a long time? Mm-hmm. But we just got here. I don't know the answer to this. I really, really don't like it. Does Jim look, um... He started his show at the Market Square, I guess, before I was born. Before you were born? How old are you? Eight. Jumping, Jesus. Is this the same Jim? Kind of like, you know, edgelord hair and, like, uh, lots and lots of He holds up the playbill with his picture on it. Yeah, that looks like him. (laughs) Yeah, but Karina, does he do a lot of, like, this? A lot of like, and a lot of like, this type of stuff. Okay, it's Jim. Yeah. Doves. Mm, oh yeah. Don't yeah. Wands. Oh yeah. How many? Two. Yep. At that's least. It. That's the. Really? You wouldn't like have cloned Jim and like sent him here before. I listen. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna say that I didn't clone Jim. That did happen, but. This is, this is not one of mine, if that makes me seem like a better person. <laughs> I don't know if it does. <laughs> I, I say, there's only one way to find out. Yeah. We're going to have to see the show of the century. Ooh, I love a show. Now, a word of warning, my friends. I've seen magic before. Oh, oh no, that's not about that. Oh, oh the splash zone? We, oh, yeah. We, we no, 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 we have a tarp. We have a tarp. Yeah. Not that either, but I'm so glad you're prepared. I do not need blood in my head. <laughs> no, if any of us are on that guest list, it's not us. And so we need to keep an eye out to make sure we do not get too close to other versions of us who are here. Otherwise, we could create a paradox 
and potentially destroy this entire world. I don't think paradox. I don't think any. I don't think paradoxes are real. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Is it more about decided. time than by? Is it just because you decided they're not real? <laughs> what have you been listening to podcasts? This. What is going on today? No, I. I actually. I wanted. I wanted to talk to you guys uh, about. There's a couple topics um, that. <laughs> I think I, I think that I've I have been exposed to some new information and it's really kind of changed how I've started to ask questions and for just for example just for example you know what we can do this after the we can do this after the magic show it probably won't be so bad if we meet ourselves what's the worst could, that could happen exactly I would love to meet me I think I would learn a lot from me we could talk about Lathander we yeah yeah it is. It is very, very, very dangerous. Uh, like for us? For everybody. Oh. Now. Oh, yeah. Okay. It, this is a theory. Yes. I've only tested it in the lab a few times. One time, it created this, oh my gosh, the most adorable kitten puppy. Yeah, that, kitten puppy? That you would ever believe. You're trying to freak us out. And for, and for six months... I felt that time paradox was the secret to all of the best inventions. You can imagine my disappointment when that kitten puppy exploded la, 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 and la, 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 la. took out the entire neighborhood. Wow. <laughs> the hurdy-gurdy music stops and the little girl picks it up and moves to another block. <laughs> wow. It's a great story until the end. I was so attached to the kid. Hey, hey, no evil. What if you got something? Vi, what if we got something bigger and then we put them together and then we dropped them on our. We, we wandered them on our enemies and they're cute. So our enemy would adopt them and then oh, we. Oh, yeah. Our, so our maybe our one, half, one half could perhaps be a bear. Uh, yeah. The wind picks up. <laughs> <laughs> Show. Yes, I think it's showtime. Oh, and, and sorry, you, and sorry. You, I was and lost. Also, the Evelyn, you covered your ears at the end of the story. So no, you no, 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 no. So you didn't hear that the kitten puppy's doing great. Oh, really? The kitten puppy is president. Of here? Yeah. President kitten puppy? Yeah, secret president. Don't ask anybody. <laughs> That's. I know, right? We might see him. Secret kitten puppy? Yes. He then picks up a lot. <laughs> I don't know what you it feels really, like really pushing windy. us in the direction yeah. of the I, show. I, I, I don't know what you pray to, but you just better pray karma ain't real, dude. Like, okay. So the wind grows so strong that it we pushes us toward the show? Go. Is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> yeah, you feel like you're actually being guided towards something. <laughs> yeah. As, as we're heading in that direction, I'm going to just catch up with the hurdy-gurdy girl, cast friends on her, and I'm like, hey, you know me. I need the friends and family tickets. I know you got them in reserve behind there. I just need four. She just takes a bit of the roll off and hands yeah, you. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll see you at next week at the thing. Yep, bye, bye. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. You just asked nice that she gave them to you. You need to leave before that spell wears off. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we gotta go. <laughs> Friendship is a spell, isn't it? Yeah, yep, it, it sure is. <laughs> it's magic. Let's go before the magic stops working. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, assisted by that wind, um, I begin to add my own momentum to it. We're going to be there in seconds. Yeah. I put my <laughs> arms back and my body forward. <laughs> Traditional. I don't want to be late for the show. <laughs> All right. To get to the high quarter, it's very simple. You just take the road through the heart of the city, past this large stone gate that's stained with soot. Beyond that, to your right, is the Grand Theater, and attached to that very ornate, ostentatious structure is a much more small, uh, shall we say, um, newer building with the words Playhouse Theater above it. And it's got a glorious glass-domed ceiling, um, or roof, I should say, like yeah. a cupola. Um, and standing at the door, Letting people in at the appointed hour is the most decrepit old man you've ever seen. Oh. Um, a, a leaf 
could knock him over if it hit him in the face. So these winds are going to be a huge issue. <laughs> yeah. So fortunately, being in the doorway, he's sheltered from the wind. It's sort of a break. Um, it's the yes. lee of the stone. But he is there looking at each ticket very, very studiously, mm -hmm. taking a long time to make sure it is in fact a ticket for <laughs> Jim Dart Magic's Phantasmagoric Prestidigitarium. Well, it's a good thing. Because so yeah. you're in line a yeah, while. Yeah, dish it up. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's fine. And as you're in line, it starts to cloud over in the sky, and it gets quite dark. Pendulous clouds begin to settle over the city. I think we got that tarp. Right? <laughs> but you are admitted in. Your tickets are good. You get in. You get great seats. It is a roomy interior. Like I said, the ceiling has a big glass dome overhead. There are all these wonderful draperies on the wall, and this fantastically ornate stage with curtains and two big wands <laughs> coming up on the side. Daddy two wands. Daddy two yes. wands. <laughs> and a sculpture of a dove um, oh, wow. worked wow. into the stonework above it. Oh my god, oh. So right into the stonework. So this is like, oh. this is like a residency or something. Oh, he, made, yes. he really like, made this it. This looks like, a, like it's been here a while, like it's a permanent fixture. Jeez. It's so popular. Does it's they like have cats. merch? It's just like sticks around forever. Exit through the gift shop, yeah. <laughs> They've got merch! Can I, uh... I want the glowy cup, I want the ears, I want the light necklace, mm -hmm. I want the thing that goes... Yeah, we got the thing that goes... Yeah, I want all yeah. of it. Yeah. I want yeah. the fake wands, like all of thing. it. They have purple cotton candy. <sighs> Dad, please, 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 please. Please, please, please. While you wait, do I have any money? I, I'm just, I'm actually curious about this. I My arms are full of shit. I was, able, <laughs> I was able to push this question off for quite a while. Do I have any money that that gray that these people would recognize as currency? Um, that is a fair question. You think that gold is gold in this city? Well, that's great news. Yep. <laughs> can I, as we walk by the old man, can I introduce myself to him very sweetly and respectfully and then say, you know, we were, um, we're friends of Jim's and we were supposed to have tickets that would let us go like backstage and see him, you know? But I don't think those tickets that we showed you are those ones. Do you think, can you just like add that to our tickets so we can be sure to say hi to our friend Jim Dark Magic when we're done with the show, please? Go ahead and make a... Charisma persuasion. Go ahead and make an Evelyn roll. I would love With to. bardic inspiration as I go, Evelyn, they got cotton candy! They got purple cotton candy! How much is your inspo? A D6, because I got nerfed by the perk. I got perked. Okay, so adding two plus 19 is 21, plus my persuasion is five, so 26. Jeez. Jeez. Yes, uh, he, he, will, he will rifle through a box behind him and he'll pull out special little lanyard and hand that oh. to you. And then he'll hand you one for each of your friends. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate it. And then he, he just sort of says, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes, secret president kitty puppy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> then as you walk away, he slaps you on the ass. Oh, I punch him in the face. <laughs> oh, he's a horn dog. <laughs> All right. Go it's ahead and make left. an attack roll. He's killed. <laughs> I probably killed him. It sounds him. like there's no man left. Uh, I guess it's a, since it's an unarmed strike, it's just my strength. Yep. Oops, that's plus four anyway. So 15? Yes. You, you absolutely punched. hit him. Cut to dead man being hauled away in a corpse wagon. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, can I revive him? Can I heal him? No, no, he's Let dead. Let him die. <laughs> <laughs> Let, him. Let him die. Kill it if you have to. He's dead good. Morning, Lord. Please bless your servant who has been returned to the light and will find a path that is much more righteous than the path he was living. <laughs> Previously. As so many of us want with our death. And sorry, okay, bye. A less, a less bottom-related path. That's yes. what we want. Less butt-striking. Yeah. More Lathander worshiping. Yes, obviously. In As equal we all yearn for. In equal measure. Mm. Fortunately, the show must go on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Look, uh, here's your VIP passes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be connected to that. Don't ask. Gotta, yeah. Don't ask about it. Oh, show's yes. starting. Uh, Ignore the dead man. It was like he was made of glass. <laughs> <laughs> you punched Sweet. through Even his face. Like, <laughs> You can see her like, it's gone, but she keeps wiping something <laughs> off her hand. Oh. Something is left. Sweet, sweetheart. Yeah? Did you just murder that man? <laughs> well, see, when it comes to redemption, there are so many ways a person can be redeemed. 
And as Lathander says, sometimes redemption is found when the light of this life is extinguished <laughs> and the new dawn rises in a new life. Inside an old man's skull. Somewhere <laughs> else. Official. I'm writing that down for yeah. our disclaimer uh, paperwork. It's the Lathanderian theology. Well, well, honey, here, I have, I have a handkerchief, and I can use a little of my artificial magic to make it clean all of that mess Please. right up. So there will be no evidence of your murder. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, shh, shh, shh. Mur and I, I'm, I'm looking at the shh. Yes. Did, wait, Room. you got my souvenirs, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I have. Okay. How, much, how much did she buy? Just so I can mark it on my sheet. So your, all, your arms are full. Did, full. I, did you get any of the limited edition stuff? Yep. Probably like 10 gold pieces worth of stuff. Oh, I got that. A lot, yeah. I've got, the, I've got the limited edition wands that are for this show only. I've got the giant sub special cup that ha comes with the yep. frozen drink in it. Yes. The big bucket, they the have steel bucket. With the, yeah, I've got the sparklers too. They're in my hair. <laughs> I got all of it. Can I hold your cup for you? Yeah, of course, of course. Here, take it, yeah. Yeah. All right. I got you this, and I hand you also a limited edition tin full of uh, the <gasps> cotton candy. I got you this, Vi, and I hand you like a little plastic dove. <laughs> oh, you are too sweet. That's so thoughtful. Thank I didn't you. pay for it, but. Yeah. Thanks, Omen. You're it's welcome. the thought that counts. <laughs> That's You're what. welcome. The room as long darkens. as they did. Hey, the room darkens. <laughs> Would you shut <laughs> up? <laughs> on, floating on stage is a disembodied spectral hand. <gasps> oh, shit. And it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Three. And I, I get excited. Two. Two. One. Oh. Hey. Hey. <laughs> and then the curtain opens up, and the act begins. Jim Dark Magic. Yes. Describe for us, if you will, your magic act. Uh, I, I come out with a watermelon, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> if you were in the first three rows. You will get wet! Yay! <laughs> we have the tarp. And then the watermelon explodes, doves fly out, and the entire, <laughs> the first three rows are covered with watermelon bits. Yeah. Yeah. Viscera. That's where, that's how it starts. Yeah, there's, yeah. Really, there's, a, there's a real hot guy in the front row with like watermelon seeds all over his face, and he's just like. <laughs> <laughs> he's in every show. Yes, every show. Yeah. <laughs> tell me that's not it. I mean, tell me this. Dude, be incredible. Oh, there's more. Just I'm leave. saying that's just how it starts. Oh, that's great. the first five that's fucking the, seconds. That's the first five seconds. I mean, from there, what do you want? Card tricks? Close up magic? More fruit. It's, all, it's all there. Oh, dude, if he ever needs someone from the Ooh. audience for a trick. I volunteer. I volunteer. And if someone else tries to volunteer, I will cast hold person on them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They will think they're dying. It's your, it's your show, Jim. Do you call for yes, a volunteer? Yes, I call for an audience member. Anybody what? in the audience want to come up here and be a part of the show? Anybody tonight? Come on. It's, Jim, it's you his can't. birthday! No, it's not him. birthday! Not him. And I point, <laughs> no, it, I point at the guy that I know. <laughs> it's funny because when you see him, he is dimly familiar to you. You have a recollection that when you were first starting out, not here in this august environment, sure. but out in the streets of the market, and you had that really shitty wagon with the crank that you had to use to open up the doors, yeah. there was a steadfast, homeless man <laughs> who was there at... And he looks like this guy? Who was there at every show and actually helped pull people into the show when they had absolutely no interest in Jim Dark Magic whatsoever. And he is a ringer. And I haven't seen guy. him in a long time. And you hadn't seen him for years. And he's in armor. Why don't you come up on stage, sir? Come on up <gasps> <Yay>! here. <laughs> Give him a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> He's in love with him. <laughs> Is he? Is he? Is he? <laughs> I think he is, sweetie. <laughs> right, I, I, I mean, I jump. I mean, I leap. I crawl. I show my ass. Yeah, you get up there. I don't go to the steps. I come right up the front. Yeah, you see him sort of 
crawl up on the stage no, in his full armor yeah, it's and like kind of like roll hug. onto it's the like stage. It's like a hug. I yeah. flow onto the stage. Flow on. Ass out. Clank, All right. clank, clank. Who amongst you is ready to see this man be immolated on stage? <laughs> 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 Immolated, that's, that's, that's fire, right? That's fire? I whisper, yeah, it's fire. Okay. Uh, I would like to cast an illusory green flame that erupts around. Green me. flame! <laughs> Thank you. And I would like a trap door to drop him <laughs> down <laughs> below the stage. <laughs> yes. All right. Unceremoniously. Yes, so this <laughs> eruption of green flame. Thank you, fills the stage. And when it clears, there is smoke and haze, but no omen drawn. He is gone. Are you not entertained? (laughs) There's kind of a soft clanking down below. (laughs) I stomp. (laughs) Uh, But the audience can't hear. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But I mean, you know, listen, making someone disappear that's an easy trick. Making them reappear. Now that's the real Ooh. magic. Ooh. Yeah, the dark magic. Uh, can I get him back up? <laughs> <laughs> I would like another green flame, and I assume there's some kind of mechanism. <laughs> yes, so after you trigger that, you can use your mage hand to turn a crank that basically lifts the false floor up. Okay, yeah. To get, <laughs> and it just starts of crank, yeah. cranking Or can I use catapult? To launch him back up onto the stage? Sure. Okay. Yes. And so I'm gonna hit there is the this ceiling. eruption of flame. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like you to make a dexterity saving throw. You know that I can't. You know that I'm wearing plate armor. I know. All right. That's why it's so funny. Negative one. <laughs> Four. All right. It's a real shame. Back from the beyond. Ow! A huge flame erupts. (laughs) And then... (laughs) What what color is that flame? It is green flame. (laughs) Thank you! (laughs) And this armored figure just sort of goes... "Ah!" (laughs) Up and (laughs) lands on the stage with an unceremonious clank (gasps) thump. Wow! I, I struggle to my hands and knees. The last 10 seconds have been a lot. <laughs> Suddenly, 20 magical pies all hit you in the face. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, just staccato bursts of pies. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. And I push him off the stage. <laughs> all right. You tumble down with a clatter and a yeah. clunk. I am despondent. Do you come back to your seat? No. (laughs) I climb back up on the stage. And I I went, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Get off my fucking stage. Ooh, what a fun part of the show. (laughs) Mommy, are those two men cussing? (laughs) I would like to use my mage hand to try to push him, like, like security, back into the audience. <laughs> Sir. Well, you discover he weighs a lot more than you think. Yeah. You just sort of yeah. press up against his yeah. chest. Nice try. I think I haven't seen that one. Back in your... If you want to push me off the stage, you can use your real fucking hands, Jim. Do I know you? <laughs> you... You don't? I see a lot of people, a lot of people coming to my show, man. This is not the best time. Do you have one of the meet and greet tickets afterwards? We can talk, but this is not it. I, I do. Back in your seat, okay. dude. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to move as though I'm being pushed by a spectral phantasmal force. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and make another dexterity saving throw. Thanks, Chris. I feel like... <laughs> Six. <laughs> Because he catapulted you out instead of using lifting the floor lift, there's still a hole on the floor. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you just fall into it. I, I, yeah. I find the other exit. Okay. Yes, you sort of crawl out through the side of the stage. 
I imagine that Certainty and Evelyn are just like, like purple face, cotton yeah. candy, just like, wow. Oh, it's <laughs> just this giant clownish purple ring. Yeah. yeah. Did you have any idea he planned all this? It's so good. Long story short, it's a fantastic show. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, in it's incredible, it's it seems like, like, except for some, there are those who have not had a great time at the show. For the last bit, he's like, look under your chair, everybody's got a dove. <gasps> and dove's just under everybody's chair, the whole audience. I need those doves back. Uh, <laughs> you guys can help me collect them. There's a there's a just there's, there's, a, there's bin. a place yeah on the outside. Just drop the doves off. Oh this man, the matinee. Feel, we need you an cannot show. keep the doves. Oh man, when you get to your feet, you feel you hear a sort of a plip noise, and then you see this white runny stuff down your pauldron. Aww. I I don't even wipe it off. Insult to injury. I just wear it. I Aww. just say hey, he gave me something. I trudge out of this is some Charlie Brown in plate mail <laughs> shit. I'm trudging out of there. Pianos are audible. Now, I, I walk up to you. I reach up, since I am only about three feet tall. Yeah. Sweetie, that isn't your gym. He probably has never met at least a version of you that's like you. I, I, it... it, it that does not help me. I know it, I know it hurts, but we know deep down inside, he is your dearest friend and he has got some magic and we're gonna need help where we're going. And not just the power kind, but the friend kind. Hey. <laughs> and so let's go to that meet and greet. And whatever in his DNA that's destined to be your best, it will come on fire and like will recognize like. I'm sorry I said that mean stuff to you before. <laughs> <laughs> About you being sort of old and... <clears throat> Meet and greet, meet and greet. <laughs> Yeah, you can see that the rabble is being shown the doors, um, escorted out. The doves are flying back into their coops with some coaxing. <laughs> and... I cry when I have to put my dove back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, have you named the dove already? Oh, yeah. It's named Puppy Kitty. <laughs> President Puppy Kitty. Yeah, it, it'll actually land in your hand. Oh, yeah, this is Disney princess shit for sure. <laughs> it's very tame. If I kept you, that would be stealing. <laughs> I can't do that. Jim? I can't do that. <laughs> I can do it. Fly, fly free. I catch it. Okay. <laughs> like a like a shuttlecock, just like bam. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, you, right in the pouch. You gave, you gave Open Theodore specific orders not to let anybody backstage anymore after oh, that right. incident. Yeah. But these guys Somehow. appear to have been given their special lanyards. So when you're back there peeling off... It's off, Exactly. Yeah. They stumble. <laughs> you're like half what is naked this? backstage. What is, uh, meet and greet? Seriously? I have had a day, you guys, listen. You would not believe this. You know somebody killed my fucking doorman? <laughs> Can you believe this? I don't know anything about that. That's, I've had a day, that's, all right? That's, he was your longest serving employee. He, he was, was the one who helped you build the original theater that you had. <laughs> I don't remember his name, but he had been here a long time, okay? <laughs> I see, it's, I see that's, 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 I, that's I, twisted behavior, and it's, it's, obviously it's shameful. I feel like I everything's heard, getting worse. I heard his behavior was a little bit untoward, really. I had never heard that. No, I'd heard nothing but good things about him. Yeah, no, he was a big brother, actually. I mean, well, not, like, not like he had a little brother. Like he, he went out and helped little kids who didn't have big brothers, and he was their big brother. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I hope you just keep those memories close to your heart. It's going to be a lot of sad little kids. <laughs> and, and probably some happy ones, you know? <laughs> 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 I say, uh, 
Mr. Dark Magic, allow me to make your acquaintance. I'm trying to take all my stuff off. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, keep talking. I'm listening. I'll help you. I'll start to like squire like for you. Like you got to pay extra to touch, sweetheart. Come on. Oh no, I'm just taking your costume. I was just gonna fold it nice for you. Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> I say, Mr. Dark Magic, I represent an organization called Acquisitions Incorporated. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, I'm Omen Drawn. I'm the the CEO. Um, it's it's something that I operate, and it's. I think that, I think that there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, for us to work together on a, a project that we have coming up. I'm sure. I'm sure there is. I'm just like washing all the makeup off and stuff. Do you guys want a signature? Do you want... I got some pictures. What do you need? I'd like a signature on a document. <laughs> that I'm like rapidly producing. <laughs> yeah. I say, Mr. Dark Magic, you have to understand, we are a... theater troupe. We are? Yes. I made it? You did. Now I am really fascinated to see where this is going. <laughs> we, oh my. We, we operate, and I look very meaningfully at certainty. I give myself just a little breath, I say, and I look back to Jim, and I am a business weapon. Absolutely sharp in every particular. And I use all of my wiles, 100% of them, on Jim Dark Magic. I say we operate sophisticated, immersive theater experiences. Experiences that are so real you will swear that you are being severely harmed. <laughs> you will feel that you are being harmed very badly. That is part of it. So if that doesn't happen, you should wonder if it's going well. Where do you guys perform? I mean, I've got a gig here I'm, uh, every night. I, I don't need to be out on tour with we, them. We perform everywhere. Uh, let me bring up some charts, which I like, just made. <laughs> Your numbers are dwindling with the younger demographic. In fact, we have found that this sort of old-style theater is dead. Street performance, wandering performance, getting out there, reality style. That's what the kids want. We're talking about guerrilla theater. Yes, and once, much like your old doorman, your current demographic dies, your numbers will dwindle, and you will go back to performing on the corner for pennies, like a cheap prostitute. Is that the future <laughs> you yeah, envision? Like a, like a for mystic whore. Or do you want to be on the cutting edge? Sometimes literally on an edge that will cut you. What kind of benefits am I looking at? Well... We get Mr. benefits? <laughs> Mr. Dark Magic. Yeah. How does superstardom sound? Sounded great when I got it last year. <gasps> well, I've got great news. I know that you've heard about Big B. You've heard about MELF. Of course I have. You've heard about Morden Canaan? Imagine Jim Dark Magic in that same august uh, company. No, I think I'm good. <laughs> I've got a show tomorrow night. I've got a book I got to return to the library, so I'm really fine. But you guys, this has been great. I loved it. Your character. Keep doing it. CEO, right? Is that what you said? <laughs> Yeah, I love it. You're great at it. Now, may I? You may. We tried to keep this under wraps. It's a part of the secret spice of what his corporation is offering. Because is it, an, it isn't just street theater. We have cracked the ability to take a performance like what you do here, mm -hmm. or what you do in these amazingly thrilling, adventurous settings, and broadcast them throughout the world. And at this, using my magical tinkering, I twist, it's just a coin <laughs> in my palm, but I cause it to project a, an image, like, like flickering above my hand of the watermelon smashing from your show. 
Now, you might think that this is just some cheap illusion. But <laughs> my artificers working nearby, you probably have heard of me, Vi, oh, I've of, heard. of the fixers. Certainly. I am acquainted with Morden Canaan and a number of the other luminaries in this city. Acquainted. <laughs> Inside and out. Mm. <laughs> Chris, Chris Perkins. He puts on an owlbear suit and then... My mom uh, watches this show. Are you familiar with the magic item Sending Stone? Absolutely, of course I am. So we have taken the same arcane science behind the Sending Stone and used it to take an image like this and rather than just projecting audio, projecting audio and the visual illusion. For thousands of miles around, you won't just have an audience of 100 or 200, you could have an audience of millions. Actually, Million. actually no, it actually just got, we actually improved it. We actually made it way better. Uh, Vi forgot, um, it's anyone in the multiverse can be watching these performances that I'm proposing. So, and I, I look around at the seats and I run my finger along the top, dusty. And I say, <laughs> wouldn't you rather perform for a billion? You can tell that Jim is incredibly excited about this <laughs> prospect, but I'm trying to be cool. Well, I mean, that, I was, somebody else was telling me about that idea too. They, and I was like, I don't know if I want to do that. But um, <laughs> yeah, it sounds pretty good. It sounds okay. When do you guys leave? What are you doing? When are you guys, what would I need to do to be with you guys? <laughs> All we've been waiting for is you. I get top billing. Deal. Deal. But we do have to change your name to Acquisitions Incorporated. <laughs> is, Ac is Acquisitions my first name? Yeah. Yes. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I feel like this is a detail that we can work out later. Uh, <laughs> Certainty, if you could please provide the, the documentation. Let's get, a, yeah. let's get a purple signature on there. I snap my fingers and conjure an unseen servant between the two of us. Right. No, fix that. I already told you. <laughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> He's gonna init no, initial space. I said initial space. No, I feel like you told like, it all of this before. <laughs> I told you like a 25-page document. And I'm like, here? <laughs> I, I need you to initial here. I don't sign anything without my lawyer. Sir, and then I lift my lawyer. cloak and I, I pull a out dove? a dove. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and he's just kind of walking That's, around on That it. is one of the funniest fucking things I have ever heard. <laughs> You're uh -huh. saying that this bird is, is it walking around walking on the around document? Walking around on the document. Uh, okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Well, it sounds good. Yeah, I think. I, no, yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. All right. Yeah, and so I, and I, I put him back in there. You just have him on retainer. Yeah. Just all uh, full time. Okay. He, he was saying that maybe instead of this upfront uh, payment, I could get points on the back end? The bird? I was like... Wow. I don't know what the back end is, and no. I don't know what points are, but and I, I listen to my birds. So what do you know about <laughs> soft cost versus hard cost return on investment? We actually do not have a... Back end right now, we're running in a loss until we generate more market presence. I'm sure you're aware of that, considering uh -huh. the great marketing you've done with your job with Little Hurdy Gurdy Girl. Yeah. And so, what we are running in a negative right now. So, if you were to go in on the back end, you, you would actually owe. It's us not the money. right play, exactly. So it's you're not want the right up play. Front in return for yeah. signing away mm -hmm. any royalties, and the reason for that is because, like I said, with a one percent royalty, you would actually owe us hundreds every day. And Evelyn so, is falling asleep. Yeah. I'm, I'm signing my name as. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. Okay. This is in your best interest, and I'm sure you're lawyer could corroborate that. No, could yeah, cool okay. yeah. could corroborate. Cool <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I am I am old. But these some were safe. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah, All the paperwork I, is in order. It seems like it. 
At the conclusion, you notice it's actually started raining outside. You can hear the plipping of the rain on the glass domed ceiling of the theater, and you actually see a flash of lightning at the moment Jim signed his last aid. <laughs> that seems ominous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's just our special effects budget already yeah. kicking in. You're, you're, you're already, you're already, We're already, already start, working. You're already starting to see the benefits. All right. <sighs> Returning to the workshop. Fuck that bird. <laughs> Skipping ahead here. Yeah. Uh, Rain soaked, unless you take some special provisions. We got yeah, that tarp, baby. I have Vi's an umbrella. Vi's got a little umbrella. The rest of you get wet. <laughs> when you get to the front door of the workshop, which you made sure was locked up good and tight because Bobby's still in there. <laughs> you don't want someone to come and steal him. Right? Um, <laughs> Just roll him out. No. You see something odd. There is a wet pile of clothes sitting outside the door. Is that normal? Yeah, I see. Vi, are these your wet clothes? I appear to still have my clothes on. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, mean, I, I go over and I just like nudge the clothes with my foot. Yeah, it's, it's like whoever was in the clothes just decided to strip naked and run in the rain or... Run inside? Run inside without clothes on. That doesn't seem possible with the door locked. Yeah, but maybe, maybe they can get, become very small. If that were the case, they would certainly leave all their big clothes behind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is what I'm saying. So, absolutely. I mean, I'm going through all the pockets and stuff. Okay. You can see in one of the pockets is a chunk of carved stone. It almost looks like a cube, about maybe six inches on a side. No shit. Um, And carved into one of the faces of the cube is a weird ruin that looks like a straight horizontal line. Like vertical? Or horizontal, yeah. That's the other one, oh, the, right? the opposite of vertical. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> With a little sort of um, curved line, almost like a hill or a mound, mm-hmm. on top of it. Gotcha. And uh, other than that, there's nothing remarkable about it. And you can also find what appears to be on the belt, some chisels and really? other tools. Uh, and there's enough iconography on the embroidery to suggest that maybe this person was a dwarf. Okay. There's also a beard comb which suggests that as well. (laughs) Maybe someone from the dwarf mine that the obelisk pieces came from found their way to the workshop. Yeah, I mean, let's let's go inside and see if we find any naked dwarves. I... Okay. I think we better be careful. And with this, I tap my utility belt and jumping off of it is my eldritch cannon, which animates into this mechanical cockatrice next to me. That's pretty dope, though. That's pretty cool. And I get out my pistol. (laughs) And the key to the door. Yeah. And a Subway sandwich. I draw both my wands, and I say, where should I look for the camera? (laughs) Same direction I'm looking. And don't shoot me with those. (laughs) (laughs) I won't be using real spells. Don't worry about it. The door is unlocked and creaks open. You see it is dark inside. The rain and the thunder kind of deafens out any ambient noise within. Although you might hear Bobby bouncing around downstairs. (laughs) Yeah, Destroying um, the rest of your appliances. But the main room used to be like a smithy, and it hasn't seen any use. So it's all sort of dusty. There's some bits of hay on the ground. There's a, over by the hearth, you can see a black anvil. Most of the room, though, is lost in shadows, except for the narrow staircase leading upstairs. Are there any wet tracks in the door or anything? Yes. Um, although they get soaked up by the dirt pretty mm, the quickly. You can definitely see a set of bare feet. Is there someone naked in here? (laughs) Nakedness is nothing to be ashamed of. Well, unless you're ugly. (laughs) Now, Vi, do you have dark vision? Or can you you see in the dark? Yes. Okay. As can I. And you can see in the dark. Yes. I'm blind. Yeah. The two of you see a shape standing in the far corner. Dwarvish, kind of? Dwarf adjacent? Dwarf, yeah, but there's something kind of weird. It's almost shimmering like jello. Oh, it doesn't have firm edges? It's, it's moist? The whole thing's moist? 
friend. I think, and I don't point my pistol at them. <laughs> nice. You might be a little confused because you've entered a private residence, but there's no need for there to be any excitement. My name is Vi. Is there something I can do to assist you? Well, that should be no problem. <laughs> you see it extrude something that looks like a, a whip-like... A pseudopod? A pasquatopod? The worst Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but please do not touch me or any of my friends with it. And then it sprouts more of them. <laughs> uh, I... Uh... Roll initiative. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. You tried, dude. You tried. You tried. Jim. Uh, three on the dice plus two gives me a five. All right. You are not ready for your close-up. Probably not. <laughs> Omen. Hello. Uh, Eleven. Eleven. Certainty. Uh, ten. Evelyn. Seventeen. Seventeen. Wow. And Vi. Thirteen. All right. Evelyn. That don't look right. <laughs> <laughs> if something is... Viscous like that. Yeah. You would then assume that at least a large portion of it was water, right? You're all right. You're all right. Right? I know what spell this is. Hope you didn't like your water. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say, the light of Lathander compels you, and I'm gonna cast Blessed Water and touch the like, whatever it's extruding and try to turn the whole thing into holy water. <laughs> wow. Oh, fantastic. Did you see Chris's face? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that scary. I must be out of practice. Yeah, yeah, he's like, what the, what the fuck? <laughs> I think that I'm developing like a specific skill, which is touching liquid things to turn them into other things. I did right. that to you too. You certainly turned that old man's head into a liquid. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That did happen. Water to wine, man's head to dead, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. All right. Um, it recoils, lets out this horrible inhuman noise, <laughs> and then... Cleanse! You see that it just sort of... Well, you can't see much because it's dark. It sort of pulls out of your range of vision, Evelyn, and now you're relying on certainty and vi to sort of fill you in on the details, but the two of you see that its appendages suddenly contract into its body like it was just touched by something so abhorrent to its fundamental nature, it didn't know how to process it. Huh. And it's then confused. Almost instantly, the spell seems to rid it of its amorphous state, and it collapses down on the ground as a dwarf. Weird. Lathander. It, yeah, I was just going to say, that, that's the brand. Morning, Lord. And we're out of initiative, just like that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Evelyn Marthane. Initiative killer. And now there's just this sort of heaving dwarf <laughs> gasping in the corner. Yeah. Uh, I, go, I go pat the dwarf on the shoulder. There, 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 there. The light of Lathander can be shocking at first, but trust me, it is a beautiful life. Yeah, I say, you should see her next trick. And I turn back to Jim and I say, <laughs> There's no script, we're just doing, we're just going, okay, yeah. Yeah, what are you doing here? <laughs> What's your name, friend? Dolman. Dolman, what are you doing here inside Vi's place? You recognize the name from Oglethorpe's journals. Dolman was the head of the Dwarven expedition. It seems he has returned, and in not quite the state you imagined. So, I, we have here in my workshop, I believe, some artifacts from your mine. It's not my mine. I was sent to explore it. My team is gone. They're all dead, except Zargo, and I hope he's dead, <laughs> because when I left him, he wasn't right. I mean, he wasn't 100% right either when we first saw him. 
Maybe right. we could fix Zardo. Are we married to that name? <laughs> I just, I don't, it doesn't feel epic to me. Oh, are you on the writing team too? Is he on the it's, writing team? I have some ideas. Just, oh, okay. Just let it flow. Okay. okay. No, that's fine. No, that's a good name. He starts talking in Dwarvish. I don't speak that. Do any of us speak Dwarvish? I do not. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I have uh, not Dwarvish. Right. And then when you don't understand him, Evelyn, he sort of grabs hold of your breastplate and shakes and is Me? speaking to you in Dwarvish. Oh, she killed the last guy that came like I, that. Yeah. <laughs> don't touch her, dude. I, I try speaking to him in Gnomish. Does he understand me? Yes. Yeah. It's, like speaking, it's like speaking Dwarvish with a potato in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with that. So I, I say to him in Gnomish, I don't think the taller folk understand our under-the-hill languages. So please try to use the common tongue. He says in Dwarvish, I am speaking common. Oh, my friend, I'm afraid to nod. You're no. speaking Dwarvish. Dude, he's cursed six ways from Sunday. He thinks, you see his eyes roll back into his head. Uh-oh. Something is keeping him from talking to us. Yes. And Vi, you can see that there are tentacles moving under his skin. Fuck! Whoa. Can I, can I get on my knees and put my hands on his shoulders and say, do you wish Lysander to come into your heart and save you right now? <laughs> uh, he says to you in Dwarvish something. Does he nod? Yes. I cast ceremony again, and I do dedication. And I, uh, since he's a humanoid, I touch him. He wishes to be dedicated to my God's service for... So for the next 24 hours, whenever the target makes a saving throw, it can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to the save. He's Lysander's servant, and he gets a buff. Nice. You're doing work? Yeah. Ceremony's my favorite spell. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he, he welcomes this, and you see that when you cast the spell, the tentacles writhing under his skin seem to subside. And when he speaks to you, he speaks to you in common with urgency. Oh, great. And uh, you can see as he's talking to you, one of his eyes is just kind of going dead, almost like cataracty a little bit. What the fuck? Uh, but he says, cross the river. Look for the stones. Stone. But you can come with us. You'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be all right. No, uh, sweetheart. You'll be no, sweet, sweetheart, you, you have done amazing work for him. But, but Dolman, it's Dolman, right? Yes. Did, did this, your symptoms, did they start after you, you were interacting with those obsidian stones? It could be it, I don't know. We left one of them at the wagons. All right. So I think you need some rest. I have some spare rooms upstairs. We're going to put you tight in bed, and before we leave... They're coming for me. I, I'll have... We will talk to have... A, We're here. A healer will come and look after you while we go, and perhaps we'll find some of your friends and bring them back as well. Thank you. But now, please, don't, don't strain yourself. He needs to rest. Rest. Can you take him upstairs? Yeah, can I, I tuck him in real I was just going to say, like... Can I just, I'm just going to cast Cure Wounds on him. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that it's a good night, you know, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit him with some of that magic juice. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Well, I'm just going gonna, gonna to cast Cure Wounds, is what I'm saying. Okay. On him. On him. Yeah. Okay, you see that he's not wounded, per se? Yeah, exactly. Um, but there's a lot going on in his head right now. It sure now. seems like it, yeah. He's and, got holy yes. water running in his veins. Uh, but that does, that does seem to almost sedate him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I sing him a, a lullaby of Lathander. Okay. Tuck him in bed. Yeah, you've tucked him in tight. You've sung him a lullaby. He seems comfortable, if nothing else, and at peace for the time being. <gasps> Man, that was like, yes. quite intense. So if he was the head of the ex expedition. expedition, he said he left somebody named Zargo. Zargo, Zargo which again, we're not sure. Yeah, I don't Behind... Yes, and, at the, at and, and the wagon also wagons. has a chunk. Yeah. 
but he said, if you cross the river and follow the stones, you'll find the way. Well, this is exactly what we want to do. All right, so before we leave, I want to make sure we're all in tip-top shape, because this is dangerous. It's going to be an exciting show. I mean, we could, <laughs> we could rest for the night before we go. And do I have memory of nearby any uh, hospital, uh, apothecary, anyone who could provide some nursing to this dwarf? Yes, and absolutely. Um, there's a friend of yours who owns a cigar shop uh -huh. across the way. Um, <laughs> and her name is Yesterday. She is a tiefling. Uh, she's very good, and she has more skills than she lets on. And you know that she, one of those is as a skilled medic. Cigar shop, hospital. Yeah, either or. Yeah. I, I, will, I will talk to Yesterday while you all prepare yourself. For tomorrow. For Time tomorrow. <laughs> And hopefully she can provide some peace to Dolman upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. He probably needs, he probably needs to be watched. I think this is like a watch situation. Because if he, if at any point he turns into the other thing and we're not awake, that's going to be really bad. I'll warn, I'll warn yesterday. Yeah. That should that happen, she needs to just get out of the room. Yeah. The rooms upstairs are secure. If you get out, lock them. And hopefully we won't be gone too long. Yeah. We could put Bobby in there, watch her. <laughs> He's not doing anything. He's not doing Bobby anything. has figured out how to get up the elevator. <laughs> yeah. Just by banging around inside it. He's able to knock and some levers impervious. around. And he's And he comes, he comes yeah. tumbling out. Put him he, in there. Yeah, he'd be a great bouncer. We just... <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Yeah. It's rubbing off on me. <laughs> Incredible. I think we should let Bobby decide where he heads, but it's not a bad idea. I look at Bobby since he heard me. He's like... You want to come with us? Bobby, you're a bubble boy now. Yeah. Until we figure that out, like, you can't punch anything in that form. You could bounce, though. I mean, yeah. to be fair, rolling over something is kind of like punching it. Yeah. Uh, sort of. Sort of. With your ball? I don't know. Like, I you see like he's kind of mastered his way around the inside of that ball. Okay, well. Okay. He's, he's built some skills. I mean, we want to recognize that. Yeah, no, I do. Yeah, Yeah, I say he's, he's new this season. All right, okay, you can come with us. Yeah, you see, yeah, you see this Goliath, basically, right. trapped in this magical prismatic sphere. I just got really excited about the prospect of sleeping before we go and just being, like, super fresh, like you said. Taking a long rest? Is that Tomorrow what comes. That's what I'm saying. Long yeah. rest. <laughs> yes. Your resources. Yesterday Yay. has come over with her little kit. All right. And Perfect. she is by the dwarf's side, administering to him well, and assures by he is in good hands. Okay. As we long rest, I pass my portent. Don't worry. Oh. I got him. Go do what oh, you have one. to do, sister. Thank you. Your, your ministrations are almost as good as your cigars. No, no, hold on, no, uh, certainty, let's hang on a second. So, I saw you roll a dice, and then I guess you just didn't like the number that was on it, so then you roll it again, is that? No, it's my Is that how we, I is that how we it. play, oh, okay. I get two, okay. Okay. What did you, what did I you was roll? Like, I was like, is that how we, is that how we play the D&D now? We just, no. we just keep rolling until we get something we like, or? I do, because I'm a divination wizard. All right. So. What'd you get? I paid for it. I got a one and a 14. Ooh, yeah. good ones. And that one's going to be just for you for talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relish when this man says, pity, a natural one always misses. I'd be like, how does that taste? How does that feel? Yeah, suck on that old I, I, uh, I, I fucked up. I fucked up. I fucked up again. <laughs> it keeps happening. <laughs> Me and Vi are just looking at each other. What is wrong with you? <laughs> He'll, he'll learn someday. God. So, so is it, it's time for adventure? Is that, is that well, what you're uh, So now, now I'm doubly concerned. Yeah. On one hand, we need for the plot to <laughs> go get those magic stones. Yes, absolutely. We need, we need more of the stones that you said have strong temporal magic. And you think that a great idea is to put a bunch of them together very near one another. Yeah. Absolutely. That, do I have you correctly? But it's also very dangerous. Agreed. And I think we need to be quick because it's clear seeing how this has affected not only the former workers in this workshop, but also this dwarf, 
We don't want anyone else wandering in there and turning into slime. That's fair. Mm. That's fair. Fewer slime people, I think, is the In goal. the sequel, we can have a bunch of slimes. <laughs> That's fair, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's, it's Chekhov's slime. <laughs> you, you, there's a See the sli slime on the mantle. If there's a slime on the yeah. mantle piece, this is very, I mean, obviously, we, we've done this before, but this is a classic technique to build tension for that next chapter. So we wake up, yeah, I'm, Jim is getting ready to go out. He's doing his vocal warm-ups. <laughs> Rubber baby buggy bumper. <laughs> Good. Yeah. He's out by the street. He's out by the street. All right, I'm ready. All right. With Bobby still trapped in the orb, the heroes venture come the morning after the thunderstorm has passed into the Cairn Hills, leaving the city of Greyhawk, crossing the Salinton River Bridge, and up into the hills you go. And as you are making your way into that terrain, I'd like everybody to make wisdom survival or wisdom perception checks. Hmm. Yeah, they're both the same. Ten for Evelyn. Ten. No, for, no for me. <laughs> Five for oh. Vive. Nineteen. Whoa. Good. Right. Fifteen for Jim. Very good. That is a... I thought about it. Don't. <laughs> but I want to keep but it. You, but you'd like I to succeed. Because I like just having that sword over your the head. Sword of, the sword of Damocles? I like All right. having it. Um, here, so this is a twenty. Ooh. Wow. Whoa. So in, this in side total. of the table is Great. really paying attention to what's going on. Not only can you see evidence of a trail going through the hills, which are quite rocky, and um, uh, there's lots of... Uh, you can't see very far because it's also very misty out here. But all three of you notice another one of those little granite cubes. Oh. On the ground. Exactly. With the, with with the, the, the symbol dwarven symbol on it. Facing up. Yeah. And a little chevron-shaped arrow carved into the top of it, which yours doesn't have. Oh, interesting. And it's pointing oh, so into the hills. Yeah. The reason that we don't notice is because Evelyn has noticed how many relationships Vi seems to have and is covertly trying to ask Vi for style advice. <laughs> I think if I had cut my hair a little bit or like... Oh, your hair is so beautiful. Or maybe beautiful. Some, you have such pretty eyeshadow. Should I do that? Oh, you, yes, you could... Would you do it for me? I'd be glad Oh, my gosh, makeover. In fact, <laughs> oh, my goodness, once we figure out what horrible thing in the hills is mutating people <laughs> and, <laughs> and then send ourselves back to our timeline, I would love to explore if we could combine your holy magic with my artificer magic to make a makeup line. <gasps> that customizes itself automatically to the hue of the wearer, to their mood. Oh my gosh, we will make billions. We will. E Evie and Vi's perfect hue. <laughs> yes. By Acquisitions Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> Always trying to take a cut this thing. When you go in the direction that the arrow yeah. is pointing, it's you it's find it's another one of these markers that's been laid down with another arrow pointing in another direction, leading you on a path this, through the hill. Oh, so they actually, they don't go to something broadly. They go to another one of itself. This is very cool. Okay, yeah, so we yeah. know exactly what to do then. Yeah. But we, exactly. but we gotta be careful, because this, this would be a really, really easy way to trap and harm us. And so... And as you follow this trail of stone dwarf stones or yeah, whatever markers. they are, these cubes, it leads you into a part of the hills where there are some crumbled down ruins and some scraggly old trees. It looks just like this. I was going to say, are there any cards? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, I got your characters here. I got Omen. That's me. Okay. And I got Jim. Hey, that's me. Welcome back, Jim. And I've got Ooh, what a great me. Yay. <laughs> and I got Certainty. And Vi, and then that's it. Nothing else. Nothing else and on I there. I got Vi. Nothing else. Yeah, and now we're fine. And I got Bobby. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Nothing but the most expensive minis. No. <laughs> we got the upgrade. We, we went premium. Yeah. Uh, and just past the ruins, you can see, yes, two stocky-looking carts. Um, even from this distance, it looks like that whatever was pulling the carts has been decoupled. So there's only the carts, no animals per se. Uh, but 
You don't need to make perception checks to know that this is not a desolate area. There are creatures here. Mm. And I need to dig them out of my box. Super friendly. I was just going to say incredibly friendly creatures. creatures. Don't you look in that's You can't I broke just... It. I broke the did tree. Did you look in the tree? I did. Right. I, want, I wanted to look. No, honestly, though, but while he's getting his shit, this is the time. Open up that tree. See if there's a monster or some shit in there. Get in there. Do it. Do it. While he's looking over there. There's nothing in there. It's empty. <laughs> okay. All right. Whew. So you can see that there are some stout oh, creatures no. kind of searching around. They're trying to get our shit. They're looking all yeah. around. How, how, how's it going with those <laughs> and big owlbear claws? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a convenient way to, ma to manipulate small objects? The, the owlbear feathers are knocking over all yeah. of the miniatures. <laughs> yeah, they all dead now. <laughs> um, so. Uh, you can tell that they're, they look like looters, basically. Oh, there's no question. They're going yeah. through all the, par they've un unpacked all the paraphernalia that was left behind at the wagons. They're searching through bags. They're searching through boxes, uh, busying themselves. They're gnomes. Gnomes. Oh, great. Yes. And you can see that sitting on a rock, watching the gnomes, picking its nails, is a werebear. Oh, with a big bear. axe leaning nearby. Now, a werebear. But, but werebear. Were bear. But werebear is probably really good aligned. Yeah. Bear bear. Right? And obviously, you know this from Mandagore University. Right, yeah. And I know this because I read it in one of the books. <laughs> now, I. Uh, I uh, this, this might go different than we think. If, yeah, if, if, just if, just yeah exactly. This, is, this could be a parlay situation. Yeah. Like, they're supposed to be, like, historically, they're good aligned. But, but, Hi there, werebear! <laughs> oh, do, you, do, you not, do you not like that? Uh, that causes, that startles all of the looters. They all look up. Uh, you see some of them pull out crossbows. Some of them pull out wands. The werebear clamors to its feet, grabs the haft of its axe, and looks at you through the runes on your little fluttery boots. <laughs> Who goes there? Oh, it's me, Evelyn Marthane, servant of Lathander, the Morning Lord. Get out of here. Why? You don't belong here. This is our camp. I, I think that that's not true. In, in fact, uh, we were sent here Because exactly you've right. won I, three yeah. tickets to the Gym Dark Magic Experience, and I used <laughs> my unstable <laughs> wand of fireworks, and I cast which I got on the last live show. Yes. And I cast Harmless Illusory Fires. <laughs> yes, you, for free. <laughs> the one and only Jim Dark Magic. Well, congratulations. Oh, come on incredible. over here, guys. Don't be shy. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You've been working no, hard. No, get a big face full of this magic. Come on. You see one of the gnomes clap? <laughs> <laughs> he, knows. Oh, yeah. he knows. He knows. And then, like, it. contagiously, they all start to clap. <laughs> right? Right? Jim and Dark the Magic. And the is like, Jim Dark Magic? That's not Jim Dark Magic. I, I just look oh. at Jim and I'm like, Really? You I think, told you you didn't. You think it's not? Head. And I, I open up and doves just in <laughs> all yeah. directions. You explode in doves. Go ahead, uh, either whichever of you has the highest charisma persuasion check, roll advantage because the other is helping you. I'm gonna let you roll, I'm just gonna give you my bard. I got a bow. plus two. I have a plus three, but I'm giving you my okay. D6. I have a plus five. So I get a, I get a D6 in addition to 11, mm -hmm. plus two is a number. 13. Plus a D6, plus three is another number, Chris. 16. 16. <laughs> 16. 16 if they say so. <laughs> what do they say? One of the gnomes says, Ah, uh, pretty sure he is Jim Dark Magic. And the werebear looks at him, looks at you, and says, Fine, you're Jim Dark Magic. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I can't do that. It seems that you're here when you shouldn't be. So, are you saying these aren't our wagons? No, is that they're what not you're your saying? wagons. Are you saying that we're looting these wagons? That this isn't our stuff? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I'm implying. Well, well, 
while they're saying this, I am surreptitiously letting my eldritch cannon loose off of my oh. belt. Yeah. Oh, the th and Clark. this time, rather than looking like a little mechanical cockatrice, it looks like a mechanical pit bull. Oh, okay. Ooh. It's you that should leave, and then I cast harmless, like, sparkle. It looks like a magic missile. Right, but it's just, it hits him, and it's just like a cool breeze. <laughs> Completely <laughs> harmless. It's the stage effect. I don't want to actually hurt anybody. I get excited for a second. Does he yeah. fall down? Do you want him to? Wait, he should try to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sell it at all. You're kind of horrified that they hired this actor. You're working with amateurs here, man. Really, really not a yes and kind of thing. Not a yes yeah, and. No. no. I'll tell you what. We'll leave if you pay us what these are worth. I mean, I'm no wagon expert, but I'd say that on a good day, these wagons are... I'll, I'll handle this. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come over and really check these wagons out 100%. Okay. And I'm going to and I'm going to go around like and it it I mean it takes probably 20 minutes. And every now and then it's like it's like if you get like that somebody who comes in to look at black mold or yeah. spiders yeah. Uh, and they're just like I'm just like that axle repair. You know, no, a wagon no. loses and the, and the, half its value as soon as you take it out. As, as soon as you hitch up a horse, that wagon. <laughs> and, and so, and I'm look, and every now and then I look sort of balefully at the wear bear, like, oh. And then I, I say, Certainty, can you come here? I mean, they've made some modifications to these. This. Are, there's the aftermarket. aftermarket. Exactly. This is what I was going to say. <laughs> you and I share one phrase. <laughs> yeah, though. exactly. And so, <laughs> and, and so I, I get like underneath and I look at it and I'm like, and I'm like yeah, see, this is what I'm you talking see, about. You see, all the gnomes are basically listening and following you around. Yeah. Like they're really interested. No, and, and, and I'm, I'm putting on quite the show. I'm like, whoa, gah. And then I look at that. I'm like, look at this axle. You can see that amid the dwarven provisions and pots and pans and expedition gear and mining equipment and everything else. I am actually looking for the chunk. That you can see splashed on one side of the wagon is what appears to be the remains of a dwarf. Fuck. Um, splashed? Splashed. Like he just sort of blew up. Like okay. a balloon. We know exactly, yeah. Um, These, but they got warped. And under... There we go. When, Perhaps at the same time that happened, or near about, it looks like a chunk of black stone fell and tumbled under that wagon, and nobody seems to be paying any attention to it, but you've seen a chunk just like yes. that. It's just like the obelisk fragment yes. in the workshop. You also see a locked chest. Oh, man. So like in the wagon? In the wagon. All right, so hmm. So, and I, I very meaningfully get certainty over and I'm like, I oh, see this is this is this is uh Wyvern rot. And then I'm like, oh yeah. yeah, you can't fix that. No, you can't fix it. You can't fix Wyvern rot. That's what my dad used to say. Yeah. And then um and then I just like meaningfully sort of indicate the chunk um and the chest. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna wait for my dad to engage. We've done this so many times. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's the double act. Them and in, you know, the, the act of, well, I guess if you can figure out a fair price, I'm gonna check out the damage on this wheel here. Yeah. I'm gonna try to just like scoop it up. And, <laughs> oh, this, oh, this wheel. Dad, the wheel's busted too. It's got, It's like I, when well, was the last time you rotated your wagon? Oh, this is bad. No, Dad, I'm gonna take uh, a no, look at no, it. No, while you're down there, then, I, then I engage directly with the <laughs> werebear and the rest of the guys. I'm like, you would have to pay us to pay you to take this. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and make a sleight of hand check with advantage because <laughs> Omen is doing such a fabulous job. Thanks. Please be good. That's well, that's our fucking... Hey, prophecy. That's true. Okay, I'll do we that. We have advantage. Yeah, why don't you just... Yeah, go ahead and roll I, know, I have an angel and a demon. <laughs> <laughs> it could be better than 14. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> Damn you, demon. Damn you. Sorry. Um... That's a 10. Okay. You should not listen to me. Um, that's, that's one of the gnomes leans in as you're doing that and says, Psst, what'd you find? 
Oh, well, I gotta oh. move this rock out of the way, little buddy, to get to get at the, at the underside of the tire. Nice, yes. Ooh, See, that when rock you is can't shiny. get a gold coin inside the groove, that means your tires are bald and you gotta change them. This is an accident waiting to happen, little guy. You wanna die? You see where reach, reaches in, grabs the rock. Yeah, oh, God oh, thank, damn it. Thank you for holding that for me while I rotate that. Okay. And now we'll just go ahead and put it right back where it was to <laughs> lodge the wheel in place. <laughs> <laughs> Right back. Right, right back. Where it, it go. was. Er. What's so special about this rock? Well, it was holding the wheel so that it doesn't roll backwards. That's safety 102. You already failed safety 101. <laughs> he, he sort of says something that sounds almost like a little arcane curse, and then he says, oh, it's magical. No, and I cast friends on him. I go, buddy, I'm just trying to help you. You're never going to work again after this. You've done a terrible job looting here. You didn't notice the damn. That lock chest, if you were a good leader, if you were a good looter, that would already be open, that would already be empty. That's a good point. You're never gonna get hired to loot again. You'll I, never, and, and honestly, if the word about this gets out from me, you'll never work again in this town. I, like, I have like a sharp intake of breath, like, I have done something wrong at some level. <laughs> But I could be willing to look the other way and put in a good word. I might go talk to your boss and say, This, this gnome runs away crying. Oh. Oh. Sucker. <laughs> runs over here. <laughs> Does Underneath he still this... have the chunk? No. No. Oh. Yeah. He let the chunk go. He dropped uh, it? Okay. Yeah, now he's crying over by the tree. Uh, Vi, you can see that that gnome comes over weeping under the tree. <laughs> Wipes. And then it's got like this long line of snot between it. Hand and its nose, and it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> and a big fountain of snot Ew. shoots out all over the place. Uh, it's the dark he... version of the Lady in the Tramp scene. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, oh! It's elastic. Then he then he looks at you. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be all right, I say in Domish. And it dawns on you, based on the sort of cut of his jib and the way they're dressed and the hats that they wear, you'd suspect that these gnomes come from Grosset Grottle, which is a subterranean series of gnome villages just north of Greyhawk. Although what they're doing out here, robbing wagons. Cards, yeah. You. My friend, <laughs> it's going to be fine. My companion, she is an expert at Wagon repair and assessment. <laughs> Maintenance. Sometimes in the passion of her work, she might speak a little sharply. It's because she loves the work so much and she believed you could take it. That's how much she believes in you. Why does everybody here think I'm so stupid? Now, now, now sweetie, you're not stupid. And don't ever let anyone tell then you. Why you are. are you lying to me? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, no, Omen, Omen is a Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. From one gnome to another. We as gnomes love to make shit work, right? <laughs> you want to help me make shit work? <laughs> okay. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find the mine system nearby that Dolman and his crew were investigating. Yeah. Tell us where the entrance is. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a few coins. I'm gonna put in a good word with you, with, for you with the artificers back in the city of Greyhawk. And then I suggest you leave this crew as quickly as possible because they're probably gonna get themselves and possibly you killed. Okay. <laughs> It's 3,972 yards that way. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. And there's a bunch of goblins there having a hoot nanny. Hoot nanny? I love hoot nanny. Yeah. 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 Sounds well, like that, a good time. That doesn't sound so bad. I have some hooch I can share with them. It will be fine. Can I give the gnome a hug? Like, I don't understand what they're saying because yeah. they're speaking in gnomish, but I see someone sad, and I'm just going to put an arm around them. And they're there. Okay. Yeah. Pets, you yeah. don't, don't get any on you. <laughs> You're gonna pet, it's and it's good. gonna stay with you. Yes, well, I, you see that he he completely embraces you. I uh, I'm telling him about Lathander. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't understand me, but I'm I'm encouraging him that the Morning Lord watches over him and and loves him. Bye, make a perception check. 
Oh. Oh, no. Oh, but make, like, succeed at it. Yeah. Make a perception check. Four. Ah, okay. <laughs> That's not great. That's not what they said to do. No. Okay. It's all good. <laughs> What's that? It's, it's all good. It's all good. I, uh, I don't think it is all Nothing good. Nothing to see here. Uh, I, think this is, I think this has become a fiasco. A all right. Um, the werebear is happy to take something for their trouble. Uh, I mean, I'll give them, they can have the chest. Okay. I have a signed autograph, like an autographed photo. They didn't see the chest. So when the, when the werebear goes over yeah. and peers inside and sees this huge padlock on this chest, werebear says, deal. Yeah. Enjoy. Picks it up. Uh, uh. Well, you oh. gave him the chest? Uh, uh, I, I now speaking in common. Excuse me, sir. Before you wander off of that chest, I believe we should all take a sir? look inside. Sir? Do I look like a sir to you? Oh. <laughs> you fucked up. No. Oh, no. <laughs> what would you prefer me to call you? Ma'am? I, I As am, is obvious. Obviously. No. I am glad to do so. And forgive me for my slip up. Forgiven. <laughs> Ma'am. I believe we should open up this chest and all of us together look at it and make sure that whatever's inside can be discussed and potentially divided up equally and amicably. Amicably? In a friendly fashion. Amity. <laughs> open it. I mean, you probably can. You probably sure you probably have a little... Mechanical snake, climb inside the lock and I, fuck I, it to death. I, I, <laughs> it's probably easy for you. <laughs> I assume. Probably, yeah. It's funny you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I get out this long, slender device that I slide into the lock. I, I recoil. He <laughs> <Jill> leans in. <laughs> this stuff always sails in the show. <laughs> and I try to pick the lock. And you get a 14. Oh. Ooh, nice, 14. Oh, I get, oh, 14. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's a good start. Fantastic. Uh, so that is going to be uh, 16. All right. Yes, you crack the lock. And when you open the chest, you see it's packed full of gemstones. Oh, <gasps> shit. I, I, I fucked up. I, I, say, I say certainty. I, um, I fucked up. I mean, that's... You don't seem yourself lately, Omen. Those are gems. Are you okay? No. Yeah. I'm not. It's the, it's the thing, right? It's, yeah. It's I'm, I'm, doing, I'm, I'm doing inside growing right now. I'm trying to become a, a, a different person. That's so Great. When you study the gemstones more closely, you see that they're not completely worked. Uh, it looks like that they may have been mined pretty recently and are still being finished. Uncut but when, when done, <laughs> they, will be, they will be stunning and worth a lot. Oh, hey. Well, this is a great gem. Wow. So should we just kill these guys? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I think we just divide them up. I love our good cop, bad cop routine, by the way, Vi. Always a pleasure to work with you. No, I mean, well, here, you so, could, you while you're talking, yeah. another so of the gnomes just sort of looks off toward the horizon, and then a second gnome kind of looks in the same direction, mm -hmm. then a third gnome. They all start to turn their heads. It's like meerkats? Exactly. I'm going to join in. Yeah, when we <laughs> join in, yeah, you see behind the hill, but kind of coming around it, is a bobbing head. A large head? And then you see it's attached to an enormous pair of shoulders. Oh, hey. I love that. And then under that set of shoulders, you see a second pair of shoulders. Huh? As a giant with four arms uh, but begins to... Why do, you, why do you even have that? That's too many arms. Sort of clamor up around the hillside. It yeah. has not noticed you yet. You're pretty clear. Is it uh, holding a rock like that? No, not yet. Okay. But not it is clamoring over a rock of similar shape at present. 
and it seems to be lifting rocks out of the way, maybe looking for food or something underneath them. But pretty soon, oh, it's going to turn its head up and see a bunch of you guys around a wagon with a glittery pile of gems at your feet. That's probably fine. Now, <laughs> seeing that this giant has extra arms, yeah. do we see any signs of the sort of like dark, tendrily movement oh, on it? Like maybe it's on, been exposed. That's the last the thing dwarf. we need. Uh, from this distance, no. You're pretty sure there's none of that. I don't even like the base model. Do you want me to go talk to him? No. Why not? No. Don't, don't do it. I don't think that he will want to talk. I think that he will want to eat the, the gnome top that you're hugging you and throw the rest of you away. Baroque. 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 Oh. He died. Oh, hi. And he jumps down. Oh. Cuts um, himself into some rocks. Everybody grab a handful of gems and hide under the yeah, cart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I do it. I grab a handful of gems. Okay. I, I like slide under the cart with my gems so pouring out as, of the pocket. As the giant is ambling toward this area, you're grabbing gemstones frantically and stuffing <laughs> them in your clothes. You are... I do exactly what certainty says. Grab a handful of gems, <laughs> stuff it in a pouch, hide under a wagon. Okay. And you the are... other wagon, not the one with the yeah, gems in it. Yeah, different wagon. I scooch over, and I'll go ahead and move myself to be right here. Oh, and I yeah. bring my crying and, gnome friend. <laughs> and I calm my, my doggy eldritch cannon so that it doesn't bark yeah. okay. at, at the giant. We you don't want to disturb the giant in their natural habitat. That's right. You see this one of the gnomes experience. next to you just kind of camouflage itself so it looks like stone, and then it just sort of stands up against one of the ruined walls. Yeah, I give you a thumbs up. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. That's really good. Uh, Jim. What do you do? Uh, I step up into the wagon oh, and no. put my foot up on one side of it. <laughs> no! No, shit! This is not the direction of this lead. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! You have made a terrible mistake <laughs> this day. <laughs> God damn it. For you have angered the great wizard Jim Dark Magic. And I look for where the camera might be. <laughs> uh, you see, one of the gnomes just pisses himself. <laughs> he becomes pissed. Uh, yes. Another one is just like, dear God, <laughs> run. And the gnomes start to hey, scatter. That's a lot of gems, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bobby cracks his knuckles. <laughs> starts to roll around. Starts to roll <laughs> toward the giant. Oh, no. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. <laughs> can, I, can I take action? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to, when I see all of them starting to want to fight with the giant, I'm going to go back to my original plan. I'm just going to fly up in front of the giant's face, curtsy in midair, say, hello, friend, nice to meet you. Oh, wow. The giant sort of crosses its eyes to look at you more clearly. <laughs> Do I know anything about giant etiquette? I've experienced giants before. You've never experienced a four-armed hill giant before, but... So when I do the curtsy, instead of just my arms going out, also my legs go out to try to imitate forearms. <laughs> <laughs> I make a shape. Yeah. That certainly causes a bit of a head tilt. Not just from the giant, but from the werebear, yes. the fleeing <laughs> gnomes. I say, I say just, I, I, she's never done that before. I don't know what was happening with that. I have questions too, is all I'm saying. The werebear says, uh, you guys can keep the gems. <laughs> <laughs> Turns into a bear and runs off. Okay, well, I mean, I feel like things are, and then the game stops there, right? Like, and then we like pick up with that next game. No, what oh. happens next is we roll initiative. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Starting with Jim, wands uh, up. Jim is 14 on the dice, plus two is 16. Splendid. Nice. Omen? Uh, I have got an eight for you, Chris. Well. I know. It's not it's a pretty good for you. Well, get you. <laughs> wow. Certainty? Wow. 17. 17. See? Evelyn? A filthy 20. Ooh. And Vi? I also got 16, but I will defer to the star 
Jim Dark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, sitting at 20, Evelyn, you were putting on this display. The giant honestly doesn't know what to make of you. Um, I'm going to take one of the gems that I had picked out of the chest, um, some sort of big sapphire, oh, yeah, and I'm, yeah, and I'll say, let's be friends, and I'll offer it to him. Okay, he starts to reach toward you, but it's not his action yet, so. Do I persuade him? He looks like he's doing exactly what you want him to do. <laughs> you know I speak fluent Chris Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a criticism. You don't want me to roll persuasion? I really like rolling persuasion. <laughs> No. Okay. You're good. Okay. Well, that would technically be an object interaction that I Yes, it would. Because you didn't let me use my action to persuade. So, as a held action, I will ready my battle axe. <laughs> and Sapphire in one hand, yeah. battle axe <laughs> in the other. Just like holding it back like this. Lethandrian diplomacy. Uh, and... The trigger will be if it does violence toward me or any of my friends. Fair enough. Uh, next up is certainty. Um, and then Jim. I'm going to cast Jim's magic missile, but I'm going to make it look like it's coming out of Jim. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not responsible for it. All right. So suddenly your wands erupt with magic. But you see this what I'm, ever happened. You see my diplomacy. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't see your diploma. I don't trust this shit at all. <laughs> that man looks the fairest. Have I ever failed to persuade certainty? No, right. You haven't. This is a bad now, man. As we all know, Jim's magic missiles do not hit automatically. No. Not Jim's don't, no. No. So, let's see, I have a plus five to hit. I'm casting it at level two, so I get four of these. Yeah, right? that's a lot. Yeah, I get four of these. Harmless fireworks. Let's go. Uh, so that's an 11 to start. <laughs> Young lady. Uh, that's an eight. <laughs> you haven't rolled any ones yet, have you? This no. is actually incredible. So now, if you do hit on this last one, I'll be mad. But if you miss all of them, then it's okay. Then it's a firework. <laughs> yeah. It's a seven. <laughs> no, you, no, no. Use your one. It's gonna, they're gonna explode in his face if I do that. Don't do that. Cause on Jim's That's magic how Jim missile, works. if this you is roll a no, 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 I'm, explode I'm, in your face. Yes, but I think that for the time being, <laughs> it might be better if that happens. Okay, I'm not gonna look at the die. How do you fucking figure? <laughs> and all. I have like four HP that, I mean, I don't. <laughs> this is. This is, the, this is the key decision of the entire oh wait, game. That was, all four will explode in his face. The do whole it. rest of this session will hinge. His face. I do it. I feel so bad. All right. So. And then the last one blows up in your face and you take. How much? They're, they're 2D4. <laughs> 2D4. <laughs> Two? Two. It's four. All right. All right. I'm still alive. <laughs> so magic damage. <laughs> that was great, actually. Blown in your face. Your other missiles fly astray. I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't. That wasn't, I didn't, that wasn't me. <laughs> I'm under the car just mumbling my lap. Is that me? I've done this before. I know it. I'm just under the car, just like burying my face in the dirt so he can't see me like laugh there, crying. There have been times where I have cast it in my sleep. <laughs> like I woke up and I had cast my magic missile. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I'd never done it while I was awake. <laughs> Don't be ashamed. It happens to everyone. Yeah, it doesn't happen to me. I say no. it's normal. I say it's it's normal. It it's happens not, to no. a lot of guys. I decide. I mean, I there are potions for this. Natural. 
It's not natural. It's, uh, it's unnatural. This never happens to me. I always decide when my wands go off. Me and the giant are also looking at you like... Yeah, even the giant is like, fuck, man, yeah, this guy. Yeah, we're both like... Wow. <laughs> oh, Bro. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> I, I shake him. <laughs> Maybe there's another one in there. Just get... <laughs> All right. The, the giant is amazed and actually kind of laughs when he sees this mystical injury fly around him harmlessly. What really? do you do on your turn? He's uh, if he's already sort of... Uh, having a good time. Having a good time. <laughs> then I would like to cast... Uh, hideous laughter <laughs> and see if I can sort of push him over the edge. He needs to make a wisdom saving throw against oh. a 13. What do I do with my dice? They're there. Nice. Wisdom, you say? Yes. I feel like this is not going to be I a don't good think it's stat for him. Yeah. He rolled an 8. Aha! <laughs> uh, then he finds everything is hilariously funny. He falls into a fit of laughter and uh, if it is affected by the spell, the target must succeed on a wisdom. Yeah, he did that. Or fall prone, becoming incapacitated and unable to stand up for the duration. <laughs> and what is the duration? Off. As long as I want. Let's get the fuck out no, of here. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, uh... Two it's, seconds. It's not that long. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't say. Unable to stand up for score. Oh, a creature with an intelligence score of four or less isn't affected. It's got a higher score than that. That's great. It's got well, a five. Oh, yeah. Minutes, so it gets I, I'm concentrating for a minute just to make him laugh. I'm giving him some of my best, you know, giant material. Yes, his laughter echoes throughout the hills. Yeah. I, I, I think we leave. Yeah, we, he seems to be having a... We know where it is. It's this many yards this way, right? Oh, man. <laughs> Let him enjoy We're himself. We're having a great time. Just, yeah, we'll just... Have, nice to meet you, friend. Have a good one. Bye, you're up next. I quickly scan around to see if there are any other obelisk pieces. Also, if there's any sign of the cave system that we're headed to. Because I know the gnome said it was over there, oh. but I don't know if he was bullshitting us. Right. Go make right. a perception check for me. And then uh, you do not see any obelisk fragments other than the one you have recovered. Other than obelisk classic. Dear Lord, seven. It is kind of misty out here in the hills. <laughs> is, that even misty, a, is that even a you number? You do know the direction you were pointed in, but you don't see anything over there that would suggest the quarry. He was very specific. He was too specific. Oh, is this, is this gnome shit? Yeah. yeah. The gnomes have all scattered by now, terrified oh, yeah. of the giant. They don't want any so part of it. just this. you guys. Right. He's just chuckling. He's having a good time. Yeah. Uh, then I'm going to run over here... And come up here, and I'm going to search around some more to see, is there any sign around here of... Oh, direct access, maybe, to a subterranean tunnel. Exactly. Oh, maybe they just, maybe they just popped up here. All right. Exactly. So you're looking specifically for... An entrance. An entrance. An entrance. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Here. Um, you find some really sort of hideously old bedrolls. Yeah. But there's nothing to suggest a hidden entrance. All right. Uh, then I assume that took my action to search around. Yeah. Um, then I send over Crispy, my Eldritch Cannon, in his dog form. Uh, dog form is protector. To go over near you, Jim. Oh. And he lets out the most adorable howl. Uh, and oh. is anyone else near Jim? I'm under the cart he's standing on. All right. Giant <laughs> laughing, crying, <laughs> laughing in the dirt. Ah woo. How woo. How woo. All right. So each of you, so Certainty and Jim, hearing this. Oh. Oh, that's cute. That you, is cute. You each receive ten temporary hit points. Ooh. What? That's Dang. like basically as much that's as my I have. That's my whole life, baby. Yeah. yeah. Wow. There's like two gems now. And, and that's my turn. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of head. Bobby's over there bumping his sphere up against the giant's foot. Not doing much. No. He'll come trundling over to the rest of you. Perfect. Ah. <laughs> Bobby's dead. Off the edge of the world! <laughs> Bobby, no. We're here? Not like this. Sure. He's king of the rock now. I mean, I'm still looking at this 
this utterly like this this crazy creature going hog wild over here. I it's I don't think this is time to stay. I think that this is time to not stay. And in fact, go. If, Evelyn, over there, honey, can you see, is there a door of some kind, an entrance, anything along that ridge? <gasps> it's so misty over there. I just got an idea. It's really misty. No, nope, you don't see any doors. Nothing to suggest the dwarven mine entrance. I got an idea. Uh. What's your idea? Uh. I'll tell you on my turn. Okay. Whose turn is it? It is Omen's turn. Hey! I am going to go over to this tree, and I'm going to see if there's anything interesting about this tree. Which tree? This tree with the mushrooms on it over here. Okay. You go over to the tree? Yes. I'm very curious about the tree. Check out the tree. What does he see in the tree? What are you looking for? I'm looking... I removed the top of the tree. <laughs> oh, shit! Oh, I didn't even know it did that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's our answer. <laughs> uh, so mm, smart. Yeah, I, I tried. Is, uh, there, is there an entrance in there? Yeah, it's full of dead squirrels. Perfect. <laughs> I, say, I say, dead squirrels always indicate a, uh, a recession down into the earth, and I just scoop through them. Ew! <laughs> squirrels all the way down. <laughs> all right. You are now neck deep in dead squirrels. Perfect. Ew. Words I had not expected to no. utter this evening. All right, so now let's see who... Yeah, whose turn is it? The giant is starting to come back to his senses. I'm oh. trying to concentrate, but I, you, we must make our way to the mine, friends, before I lose control. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to project. <laughs> like, I'm talking to the back of the audience, you know? <laughs> I, I look around now toward that standing stone over there mm-hmm. uh, to see friends. Please help me. See if we can find something here before we go off on the direction the gnome gave us, which might just be some cockamamie nonsense that's going to get us killed. But couldn't it just be the truth? It could be. Yeah. But I I, I don't want to run all the way over there only to find out we have to run all the way back here. But there's not a giant over there. That's a good point. I actually do have a very cool hat that I could use to just check out the location very quickly. I could location scout, for lack of a better term. Okay, you see that that stone is covered with very, very faint dwarven ruins that have been worn away by wind, rain, and time. But it should be like a way marker, almost like a a sign. And each of its is sort of flat on numerous sides, and there are rows of these dwarven ruins that if you could read them, would tell you, you know, this is that away, this is that away, this is oh, that away. Oh, it's like a waystone. It's yeah. a waypoint. Okay. Yeah. Hearing Vi say if somebody wants to tell me, I crawl out from under the way, I'm still crying, laughing. Um, wipe the tears from my face, come over, and um, I'm going to, I'm going to study this. Um, Do you have those techniques? I mean, I have a. I have identified. I don't think it's a magic item, though. I, no. So I think instead I'm going to take out, like, my calligraphy supplies. What you really want is, like, a comprehend languages spell. Oh, got you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do that anymore. No. I used to. I don't, do I don't got now. that. Okay. No. But okay. I can... Is there any animals nearby, like, that are alive, not the dead ones? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are? Yeah. Okay. There's, there's, like, a mouse. Okay. Can you speak so with I'm some gonna, animals? Yeah, I'm going to use my action to cast... Hell uh, yeah. Speak with animals. Okay. I'd be like, hey, hey, little buddy. The little mouse scampers over to you. Hi. Um, <laughs> Pal. Listen, uh, can you, do, have you seen where the dwarves go underground? They're kind of, they're small, they've got big beards. Uh, yeah. Demeanors. Uh, okay. It will tell you that the dwarves are 3,000. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, okay. He tried to tell us. Yeah, yeah. 
Thank you. So the much. day that Jeremy Crawford um, tried to outsmart Chris Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> this day. I, I look at Vine and I'm like, Courtney, a little mouse told me. <laughs> That it is exactly 3,000 <laughs> miles that way. Well, shit. We should have listened to that. No. <laughs> it, just, it just tells you, like, it's actually telling you something really important about Vi, and it's not good. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. So is the plan to head off in that direction? Yes. yes. I, I pat the giant on the knee. You keep enjoying that. Bye. As you do, he, he is recovered, and he oh. gets up. He gets back to his feet, and he, like, cracks his knuckles. <laughs> I'm like so. waving bye. 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 Yes, you guys run away, and as you do, and you look behind you, you see the giant has gone over to the wagons and is strapping them to his feet. Oh, <laughs> nice! Oh, these shoes. Good That's for them. Roller yeah. skates. And he oh, just tries. He tries to. Peelies. He tries to roller skate after you on these wagons, <laughs> and he gets about 40 feet and falls down. Uh, that's not the first time always been. Yeah, practice. exactly. Uh, when we, listen, when we come back yeah. here and he's learned how to do it, we're fucked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't run away from that. Skater the giant. All right. At this time, I will need this glorious diorama replaced. Oh, this instrument. With an all new one. We get a second one. As you make your way to the rock quarry. <gasps> what? But, what? Two. What blessing. I didn't know it was a two diorama. I, I got all the player characters. Double nice. diorama. We are nope. spoiled. I did not. Thank you very much. Uh, two, and like two magic. Diorama? Daddy two diorama. Do diorama. <laughs> two DM, See, my, two diorama. Do <laughs> my, my DM instincts were showing too much. I'm yeah. like, it's a diorama. It has to be here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was on the same page. I, I didn't even know there was a second diorama. I, I was I'd backstage. There was another diorama. Good God. Whoa. So these young men are... Are bringing out a, what? a diorama. What? Okay, that looks that is a hoot. Move my shit. That looks kind of sick. It's okay. That looks sick to death. Yeah, it does. All right. Wow. I want to go to that hoot nanny. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh yeah, dude. This is like nonstop. This is like Goblin Town. <laughs> this. this all right. I think we found our entrance. I was thinking the same dude. This right, right here. Yeah, I know where. I know. I think I know how we're gonna get in. The carefully hidden entrance. Yes. God, these are great. There, there's a luster to them. Yeah. Do you, do you desire them? I do desire them. All right. One of you fell over. I can't do anything about that. Sorry. Yeah. You have big paws. Omen is I dead. don't have that tactic. Oh, yes, yeah. Omen. yeah. Omen is a corpse. I got you. Who is bowled right. over by the beauty of this? Isn't this remarkable? So. Once you get to this site, and this used to be a rock quarry that's perfectly obvious, and there are these giant sharpened shards jutting out through the rocky floor, you can also see that there are these natural risers. This is there bizarre. are some floating chunks of rock as well, as you can see from there, 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 there. And they just sort of hover in place at their height, as if held aloft by some ancient earth magic. Long before you get too close, you hear the sounds of a celebration. All right. Yes. Nice. Goblin party, baby. Hoot dance off. The hoot nanny. And as you creep upon it, you can see that the creatures engaged in this celebration are numerous, dozens of them. And they're all goblins. And you have like a big basket of goblins. A That's what it looks like to me. A storage tote. Yeah. But given my ineptness with handling minis, I'm going to handle only one. Oh, no. Oh, no. But, so, but in our mind's eye, we should know that there is a plethora. So before I dig out this mini, which I had crafted specially for this oh, show. God. <laughs> really? Uh, let me just say that uh, you can see a plume of smoke rising from the object that I'm about to put down. And mm. the goblins, if they're not worshipping it, they seem to be enjoying the company of it, dancing around it. Really? Praying to it. The smoke? The smoke is being issued from what in the shit? Whoa. What is this? So this is from my good friend Holly Conrad. <gasps> Woo! Holly Conrad. Rick's Eastinger. She's a all right. Wicker Owlbear. Oh, a wicker that's amazing. Wow. I love him. Did they... Oh, shit. Did they make their own weird little god? But he's great. So cute. And this flammable. This is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We so, spared no expense. I can tell. 
Yes, you can see that there is a fire around its base, and there are all sorts of, maybe a dozen goblins really close to the fire, clamored around it. All these goblins are caked in mud, like they've slathered themselves with mud, and are just paying obeisance to this magnificent wicker creature. Now, is the wicker creature moving at all? Not at all. It seems to be an inanimate... <laughs> it's a pile of sticks, and they think sticks. that it's a god. But shaped like an owlbear, like yeah. Chris Perkins seems to be. Exactly. Oh, and on the lower levels, you can see other groups of goblins in smaller clusters. Some of them are getting high. <gasps> high? They're just smoking pipes and things. Drugs? I love yep. these people. They're great. And some of them are playing drums. Some of them are playing other instruments as well. But everybody here seems to be in a state of reverie. I play my drum too. You have a drum? Yeah. I yeah. Think, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think that we can rock down to electric Yeah, no, avenue. I add my cacophony to it as well. I just oh, start so you're just going to go out there with your drum and... <laughs> <laughs> I'll start dancing. I, and I, like, throw down, Perkins. Like, I go crazy on these drums. Give me a... Per I was about to say perception. That's stupid. Give <laughs> yeah, me a percussion a check. It's a drum. Charisma performance. Okay. Yeah. Check. Can I aid with my dancing? Oh, to make it look like the drums no. are even more fire than <laughs> they are. Sure. Yeah, cool. I'll say it. I'm like, so you get advantage. That's an 18 plus five. All right. Plus three. Wow. Yes. But you have advantage. So let's see if we can get a 20. I have advantage. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm Could dancing. Could be better. Yes. What? 24. 24. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm so you see the deftness. Oh yeah, this is exactly right. the right plan. This was my what plan. What are the rest already? of yes. you doing? Well, I'm getting in the fucking Congo line. <laughs> oh. uh, Jim approaches one of the ones with the pipe and gets in line. <laughs> he's just, he just sits down. He's waiting. He's waiting for his turn. To, to craft services. Yeah. To fit in, and you all see in my vest, I actually have a lineup of smokes. <laughs> I slide my cigarette, which seems to never burn down, little artificer magic. I slide out a different one, which is much wider at the tip. <laughs> <laughs> and this one, I go, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we know how to party. Yes. Yeah. All right. We're yeah, so you guys move in. Uh, some of the goblins actually sort of stop and turn and look at you. Some of them with, like, with blurry eyes. Oh, yeah. Uh, Did they through, pass the pipe? Through the haze of fog. And as you approach them, Jim, they sort of recoil at first from you, but then one of them elbows another one, and he gives you a pipe. Oh, so he was, he, he's able to fuck up the rotation. I hit that shit hard. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh! oh no, okay, just imagine all the other shit they're seeing. Like, we are, yeah. we are the least... This is crazy like, thing they're seeing. This is like some warg turd that you're smoking. You know, this is like <laughs> awful, foul stuff. Oh. At first. <laughs> oh, okay. Sweet. You're Sweet. smoking shit. Yeah. If you want the real stuff, <laughs> Vi can hook you up. All right. Yeah, I'll take a hit of that too. <laughs> Jim puts down the pipe and grabs the cigarette. You see, as you're passing that around, a couple of the goblins are like grabby hands. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I keep it going. I don't stop it. Oh, yeah, they're like... <laughs> Yeah, it, it won't run out. One of them sticks no. up his nose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I'm still dancing, and I'm like, I'm also on drugs. Yes. <laughs> I'm high on life. Yeah. Some goblins form behind you. Oh, yeah, we're, we're going all the way. Yeah. Like, I give them something fun to do. I mean, it's, it's smoking something gross, but is my state altered? No. <laughs> oh, it's, just, it's just monster shit. It sucks. It's just monster shit. It's just okay. Work. Yeah, it's just work shit. Uh, no. Uh, so you've only been doing been doing it for like thirty seconds. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Danger nothing, nothing yet. Yeah. The the rocks aren't moving yet. Oh, We're no. not seeing dead relatives in the ground yet. Okay. Yet. Yet. <laughs> um, so while all of this is going on. Everybody make a wisdom perception check. I can't. As you're getting the lay of the land. Watch this. If there's any shenanigans going on. You're going to be very impressed with me, Chris nope. Perkins. Uh-uh. Ten. Eight. <laughs> Twenty. <laughs> One. Ooh. I, I've been a, at a race to the bottom all night. Two. Two. <laughs> Twenty. So, oh, again, and you know why? Because I'm not out here fucking smoking monster shit. <laughs> I'm not reaching into my pocket. I'm not out here trying to get high. You know what I mean? 
I'm high on the rhythm. Exactly. That's what I'm doing. And I still I'm, rolled like I'm high on the funk. Know. Hey, do not yuck my yum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's a great yum. <laughs> Podcasts are is he listening to you. I was trying to chill. Yeah. Anyway, all I'm saying is that I got a 20, and that has historically been a very high number. Oh, nice tower. So while you're in the conga line, yeah. you see that the mud-caked goblins up, yeah. on, the, up on the ridge there. It's, a, they're, it's of a different type. The mud guys are up there. They're just, they're just goblins, but they've oh. kicked themselves in oh, mud. Possibly because they're so close to the fire yes. and they're trying to cool their, yeah. keep their fair, bodies cool. Fair. But just at a corner of your eye, you see they're kind of doing something weird. <laughs> uh, they've got uh, little swaddled, you assume, goblin babies. Oh my. And they're just sort of rocking them back and uh, forth and doing their thing. And then one of them goes, whoop! Into the fire. Oh no! <laughs> oh, <what>? no. <laughs> like, like accidentally, like he's stoned. No, he no, no, no. It's probably he probably tripped. And can then, I catch it you as didn't a see reaction? It. Yeah. No. So my question to you, Omen, do you tell anybody? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I you're just, dancing the conga line, and you and see I, another one. And I'm dancing. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Throw my baby God. Ethan, Ethan I, is in I, front of you in the conga line. Yeah, exactly. So do you just like, no. whoop. And, and again, this conga line, let's be clear, it's going right into this gate. And so it's like, I see that second goblin baby, and I'm like. And the rest of us don't <laughs> see this. Nope. Nobody else sees okay. I'm imagining shit. you're driving Evelyn, <laughs> like, so she doesn't see. I don't want to see any more of those. I'm too busy, like, jamming. I'm like... like, All right, you get all the way up to the gate. You see that there are dwarven ruins around the gate. There's also um, some uh, rocks nearby that have also ruins, and there are also ruins carved into the ground in front of the gate. Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. Fire's getting stop! a little bigger. Stop ruining it. No, I, I, <laughs> Christopher. Christopher. <laughs> what is the glee? No, the glee. And these flames, these flames are reaching high into the air. And I'm like, that, you guys need to really pay close attention to these that rooms. That smoke has got a nice smell to it. Oh, oh. My God. Why do we sign up for this? It's rich. There's a richness. <laughs> and shame on you for yeah. not telling us. <laughs> yeah, this is your fault, honestly. You don't even know. All right. Um, so, so, so I'm just going to, as part of my dance, I'm going to work a maneuver like By this. By the way, Bobby is in the sphere back there looking up at this and going. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did. And he's trying to roll his sphere no, up the escarpment, I look, I but he can't back. get it up. No, I, 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 I put a little bit of a reverse into it, like a little beep, beep, beep. And I get back, and I get a hold of Bobby, and I push, I just roll him over toward (laughs) the door. Oh, no. All right. Uh, So the rest of you can see that Omen has got the conga line right up at the door at this point. Okay. And is scoping things out. What a nice party that's totally morally upright. There's nothing about this party that could be considered outré. Yeah. So rare these days. Good, clean, fun. <laughs> so when you get to the gate, you see it's obviously closed. But this is clearly the entrance to the Dwarven Mine. Make a... Go ahead and make a... a let's ba- say an ma- investigation make a, check. Make a baby murder roll. <laughs> investigation. With advantage? Sorry? With advantage? This is all of us? Uh, it was a joke. <laughs> No, just a straight up, yeah, you can make it too. I'm uh, jamming. Anybody, anybody, wa- anybody wants yeah. to so make an investigation check. Inspiration. Oh, inspo, yeah. Oh. I rolled a nat 20. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's like a super high number. And I got a 19. I uh, got 21 total. I got a 9, but I know someone who rolled a natural 20. <laughs> I can like see the inner workings of the door. <laughs> you can see that uh, on the gate itself, there appears to be a riddle written in Dwarvish, which would be a puzzle to all of you, I know, except on the ground in front, somebody who's probably come here before to either rob the place or get into the place has basically put a cipher Oh, so that you can translate the ruins to interpret the riddle. Oh, this seems like Vi material. And the riddle reads as follows. Oh, boy. Right, everybody write this down. 
It never weighs upon your brain. Upon your brain? Though sometimes it can be a strain. While you have it, it's yours alone. It grows on you like moss on a stone. Yep. It's a hat. <laughs> Am I right? You're like, I'm bored with this already. Jim says hat. Hat. Out loud. Hat. The gate does not open. I don't hat. know. That was my best guess, you guys. I and what, really thought and I had that. What was the last part again? I'll read it again. It grows on you. It never weighs upon your brain, though sometimes it can be a strain. While you have it, it's yours alone. It grows on you like moss on a stone. A worry. Ah, but that weighs on the brain. The gate does not open. Dang it. Hair. The gate does not open. <laughs> oh, dude, hair is really good. I thought hair was actually, I was trying. <laughs> on, on that one. I was really fucking trying, man. <laughs> I was trying to make a joke. I thought it might be hair. Uh, hmm. An uh, idea. It does not open. It grows oh. on you like moss on a stone. It's made by dwarves. Is it a beard? Beards yeah. don't weigh upon your brain, I guess. It's a beard? It's a beard. And when you say beard. <laughs> Good. Yeah, it's worked. The gate lowers. Yes. That yeah, you're is, so smart. That is fucking it, dude. Nice fucking <gasps> job. Good job. I mean, that's a, that's what a higher oh. educational gets. Oh, you right dude, there. it has little Fine. chains. Really, really oh. good. It drops down and apparently crushes Omen. Yeah. Um, it, cr it, it actually yeah, comes. Yeah. It actually comes down slowly. Yeah. Slowly, slowly, and then drops on Omen's head. Oh. Ah. That's, that's such so a cool. cool. Door. I mean, yes. technically a beard is hair, but yeah, I mean, I'm just, it's a good, good no, guess. you were really close. <laughs> yeah, no, I was. The hair kind of set me on yeah. the right path. No, I think it did. Yeah. At that point, uh, a bunch of the goblins ooh and ah, and when you turn around, you all see a goblin. Oh! I see. Oh! <laughs> Can I catch that one? I say, we I say, all I say, see it? I say, yeah. why did they just start doing that? <laughs> why is this the first time that they have done this? Can I, can I catch that one? Oh! Can I catch I, that one? Is this like your people's custom? I don't Yeah. <laughs> if you want to, you can make a religion check. No, but I want to make a like, deck like check. To. I want to try to catch you wanna, it. Okay. I want to make, make a Oh, beep. no, it's in the fire, and it's crackling <laughs> away. I, I, oh, make a, I make a religion check. Can okay. I do history to see like what I remember about goblins? Okay. Uh, I got I'm 21. Okay. I got an 18. Very good. I got you, dirty 20 for religion. I'd oh, like to roll cookie. You all sort of conclude that this is obviously a representation maybe of some sort of fertility being who can bring, you know, uh, good, good fortune and oh. harvest to the goblins, but there's some sort of weird sort of folksy sacrifice that has to be made. Uh, you Jim know how that goes. And, and uh, he's like, like a looks to see if he can get a baby. Situation yeah. type of thing. Um, but Evelyn, yeah. when you run up there, you see that the swaddled babies uh -huh. are made of sticks. Oh. There's, they're just, see? these babies are meant for the flames. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's their natural home. <laughs> they belong there and it would be weird of us not to let them do it. I'm sorry, Are did you think that goblins were throwing their actual children into the flames? Is that where your head went? I just came to check. <laughs> I knew this the whole time. I am a fan. <laughs> Everybody a... knows about these goblin stick babies. I am was a... gonna throw one, he's like, these aren't real babies. <laughs> <laughs> now he doesn't even want to do it, he just drops it on the ground. <laughs> it just sort of shatters. Yeah. As a fan of religion, I love to just observe and participate. Exactly. It's an anthropological sort of thing. Okay. So at this point, you allow them to continue their ritual? Yeah. Uh, far be it from us to disallow them. Okay. Their, now, you know, this is their culture. Now, I, though, <laughs> do look at all of them. I'm concerned because of how close they are to this mine and seeing what it did to the dwarves. Do I see any sign that they're also being affected by mm. the obelisk. I'm glad you asked. Go ahead and make a perception oh. check. May I make an investigation check instead? Yes. Thank you. 
Dang. You see that? Yeah. That's real love. the rules designer to the That's narrative real designer. real life. Oh, shit. 24. <laughs> All right. You, as you scan the crowd, you see a bunch of activity that you haven't noticed before. For one thing, there's a goblin off in the shadows basically eating the brain of another dead goblin. <gasps> Whoa! What the f- Is it made of sticks? In another... <laughs> In another area, uh, there is a goblin sort of half climbed up on the rocks and just sort of slumped there, and little spectral tendrils have come out of his forehead and are just sort of waving around in the air. What in the shit? Hmm. My friends. Yes. Exactly what I feared. We need to get that material out of here and contain it as best as we can because it is corrupting everything, even these goblins performing their lovely ritual <laughs> are, being, ritual. are being affected by this. And it's a fixed amount of this stuff that we can destroy or get? We should try to get it all out of here, not only for what we need to do to try to get ourselves back to our own timeline, right, right. but also so that there their lives. Timeline? Oh, that's a part of the plot. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's uh, movie lingo. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And, but also. It's starting to kick in now. The yeah. wolf poo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is? Yeah. Woo! Woo! Now you're on the right. That's good shit. Just pull the bar down. Literally. But we do not <laughs> want that energy source that might be helpful to us to stay here and wreck all of the life in this area. No, I mean, I don't want that at all. Yeah, I agree. That would be horrible. That would for be the, the worst. Movie. Would you buy tickets to that? Not me. No. It's no, a we downer. Want, we want the conclusion right before the end credits. We want to yes. see all the, the celebration with the, these people and the people in the whole region because this corruption was removed. No, that's, people are going to love it. Yeah. yeah. They're going to eat that shit up. <laughs> so how do we do that by... As I, as I look at them eating brains, right? Do you point that out to us? Yes. I'm with you so far. I put the pipe down. And I also, I also ver- <laughs> I just I al- sit down. I also verify that the people who are being eaten are already dead. Yeah, there's, you see sort of the involuntary twitch of a boot, but yeah, clearly, clearly oh, dead. And when, you, when, when all your eyes sort of turn, that creature gnawing on the other dead goblin seems to be aware suddenly of your awareness uh, and begins to sort of recoil and skulk back into the shadows. No, I, absolutely not. I think you need to get into the mind quickly. But this situation is worse than I thought. And I'm now getting worried about us using this as an energy source for the time travel that will be in the sequel. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. And so, my friends, I think you need to head into the mine. And I need to head back to my workshop. Can I give this piece to you? Because it's doing all this weird stuff to people. I was just like carrying it around and playing a drum. <laughs> you, as always, certain to you are the best. Because having that sample will allow me to start building a containment field back in my workshop so that when you come home with all of this terrible material, I hopefully, fingers and toes crossed, will have a way to contain it so we do not get all fucked up like that brain eater over there. (laughs) You're saying less brain eating in total. I would prefer zero brain eating. But life is not perfect. We have to compromise. Um, I like what I'm hearing. I don't have a mirror on me. Do I have any tentacles in my teeth, on my face? Am I good? Let's see. Let's see. My nose. Let's see. You're good. Honey, you look. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, (laughs) hang on. Am I good? You're fine. Okay. (laughs) All right. They, they, the the brain eaters. They noticed us. So I think we need to move. Deal. All right. You all be safe. You be safe. And I'll be. If I get any indication you need my help, I, of course, will come to you in a second. But in the meantime... I, I, hug, I hug Vi. Oh. I say, you don't look a year over 400. Stop <laughs> it! And I mean that. 
Vi I mean that, and I kissed her on the top of her head. That's so nice. That's such a nice compliment. Why does Why does I have lived for a long time. Agreed. And I learned long ago to take the things sent my way with the intention that they were sent. <laughs> And I know you meant that in all the best ways, my friend. And so thank you. I, I resent this. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, well, I guess we'll see you back at your house. So as those of you who know Vi well, give her a parting hug. Except for Bobby, who's like, boom. Pressed up against the <laughs> I guess I'll see you at the after party. Bob, Bobby's gently yeah. bumping. That yes. makes me cry that Bobby can't hug yeah. Vi. You're, that sucks. You're, you're doing amazing. And I look at Bobby and... I blow him a kiss and I say, honey, I look forward to us getting to know each other so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. All right. And you too. Yeah. Come here. Aw. Oh, and I hug As you, you sort both. of huddle around, it's a bunch of zone. goblins sort of huddle around. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just sort of form a big kind of mound hug? around you. And then they all just sort of... <sighs> Give you oh, nice. and, and I go back, like, as, as they're starting to pull away, I go back over by Jim, and I look at them just like sort of dispersing, and I say, and cut. <laughs> Scene. <sighs> Our revels now are ended. Thank oh. you very much for watching. Oh, I assure yeah. you, Vi gets home safe, better than safe. She actually meets the Barogue on the way home, and they roller skate back with her <laughs> on his shoulders. Aww. See, that's good. That's life affirming. Jerry, would you like to close us out? I would. I do have a few thank yous uh, to deliver. Now, so shout outs. I sure, I'm sure that you have seen the cool Acquisitions Incorporated glassware that they have over at the Voodoo Ranger Lounge. It's very, very cool. Our good friend Chris Straub did the art for it. Uh, thanks so much for supporting the show. Foam Brain, obviously, you might have seen the dice sets. Dwarven Forge made not one but two diorama -i. Um, uh, And if you would like to see what happens next, I've got great news for you. Because that is exactly where Acquisitions Series 2 uh, begins. And there is a special preview tomorrow if you would like to know what happens next. Now, and there is one additional thing, if I may be so bold. Oh, yes. Yes. All right. Yes. I think you know the name. You know the face. But let's take it case by motherfucking case. Are you being hectored by a specter called drawn? Hellish rectors on an unexpected vector called drawn. Solemn golems in a column got you down called drawn. <laughs> Wicked wizards wrought a blizzard proper noun <laughs> called drawn. I fucked a god. But let me pull back the curtain. See, fuck with my daughter and get slaughtered. That's a certainty. <laughs> She's the fly inheritrix, fry inheritrix, arithmetic with the relics. Wind her up and watch her get it. Nothing sweet about the way she holds a wand. Diabetic. <laughs> Nepotism got her fitting in some platinum kicks. Prismatic spray when she flicking the wrist. What else? I lost it. Nobody cuter. Fuck a suitor. But if you're trying to wait in line, she'll be accepting applications when she's 40 fucking nine. Evelyn is like the princess in the story. Except she's got a magic axe and chops in half. Shit is gory. Marthane, 
afraid to say the name in case she manifests. Man, I bet she's out there slaying demons on the parapet. Horse girl confirmed. <laughs> she yearns to brush a mane. Girl's gone fey wild. <laughs> fey style. I'll blush again. <laughs> Trying to find the time to tell her how I feel, and I've been waiting. And I hope she likes the bad boys, because I worship Satan. <laughs> <laughs> and Jim brings the D. And I don't mean dark magic. I mean he slings the D and gets higher than the attic. And though my tendency toward friends tends toward the polysyllabic, I love him and I'm glad to see him back at it. <laughs> Good night. Thank you very much. Yes.